Good evening, all. I would like to call to order the planning committee meeting of April 8th, 2021 at 5.31 p.m. Our first item of business is approval of our planning committee minutes from March 11th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions, those minutes stand approved. Uh, we have one business item on the agenda tonight. Mr. Kurtz, I will turn it over to you to walk us through this one. Would you like me to um, let the applicants in before you do this? You're on mute, Mr. Kurtz. Yes, please. <laughs> and so I believe we have um, Mr. and Mrs. Thomason and then two of the engineers that work with them. I'm not sure about the other people in the waiting room or what they're here for. I believe these were our only guests expected. Yes, that, that looks right to me. Good evening. We are about to turn this over to Mr. Kurtz to let him introduce um, the agenda item and issues. And then if there are any questions, we will be happy to ask them. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, so if you'll allow me to share my screen. Oh, sorry, I thought we'd click that one already. Go ahead. There we go. Okay, there we are. Okay, thank you. So this is a request by Ms. Julie Thomason for uh, approval of a site plan and conditional zoning certificate to permit the construction of a car wash and storage building uh, on a vacant piece of property next to uh, Taco Bell restaurant at 4152 Kent Road. The property is zoned C4 general business and uh, car washes are conditionally permitted in this district. Uh, the plan shows a car wash building approximately 2,550 square feet in area uh, that is located uh, about 93 feet from Kent Road, um, uh, and then a storage building that's further uh, further south. The um, there are six spaces. Let me just skip here. Um, <clears throat> there are six parking spaces that are shown towards Kent Road, and then they have a total that the the, uh, the uh, waiting spaces are uh, go around the building to the back of the building back of the property and back through, they have a total of approximately 31 waiting spaces that could be accommodated on this plan. They're also showing a storage building, uh, approximately 40 by 80 feet in area uh, towards the back of the building. That will be well off Kent Road, approximately 400 feet from Kent Road, probably not that noticeable. Um, uh, prior, this has been studied um, uh, at Planning Commission a couple of times. Uh, there was some, um, uh, uh, what was, specifically studied was the, uh, the uh, addition of a curb cut there. And the applicants did a traffic impact analysis. Uh, that, uh, that analysis was reviewed by our traffic consultant, Terry Donovan. Um, he reviewed that traffic uh, analysis and indicated that the um, uh, introduction of that additional curb cut would not be a detriment to the, you know, to the um, roadway, particularly, and that analysis took into account the new signal that's going to it's in, under construction now at the uh, unsignalized uh, target intersection. Uh, so again, um, the, um, uh, there were no other traffic improvements that were proposed um, that would be uh, from based on that traffic studies. And our, as I said, our, our consultant concurred with those findings. Um, there's, only, there's one variance associated with this project, just to, uh, as this bumps out here, there's a small portion that is less than the 10 feet required. Again, it is adjacent to Taco Bell. Um, Planning Commission determined that, that was relatively minor and again, adjacent to an another commercial parking lot didn't seem to be uh, cause some concern, any concern. Uh, let's see. This is a, a rendering of what the building would look like, uh, a split face block. Um, and um, they've indicated their uh, 
uh, car wash volume, uh, again, uh, not uh, significant there uh, throughout the day. So they, uh, they um, indicated this is their busiest time uh, with uh, about 12 cars per hour. So again, uh, that, that those numbers were analyzed as part of the traffic study. Uh, the conditions for approval were engineering and building department approval of construction plans, city harvest approval of landscape plans. And then since this is adjacent to the airport, submission of any required documentation to the FAA uh, that would be required. I'll stop my share and uh, take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Any questions from the committee? Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Chairwoman. Um, Rob, just how far is it from, because I can't visualize it, the, the new traffic target or the new traffic light at target and how far up is this? Is it deemed plenty of room to get in and out even with the new traffic light? I think I'm wording that correctly. Yeah, the, the left turn lane at that currently unsignalized is going to be extended, but it won't be extended to this property. It'll be, uh, and Jim may be able to jump in there. The, the left turn that's going to be extended probably will um, where the, um, uh, the, well, let's see, the <coughs> former Huntington Learning Center. Jim, is that about where it, it stops? It, yeah, it, it stops just on the other side of the driveway to that former Huntington Learning Center. Thanks, Jim. And, and that, Mr. McClure, excuse me, uh, just a quick follow-up. That That's deemed far enough and all that other kind of stuff, Jim, with the traffic and far enough up the road, I guess, is just a question. The, the study, yeah, the study of it, the intersection at Target was studied twice by two different companies and Terry Donovan both times. Uh, there, there's been two proposals where the gas station is. And um, they use this last study and, and use that to pattern a study for a laser car wash. So it, the actual start of the turn lane where the widening will begin is at that driveway before they get to Taco Bell or right at the Taco Bell property line, which would be closer to that Huntington Learning Center or whatever the, that building's called now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Mr. Fioka. Uh, Mr. Kurtz, I had a quick question um, in terms of FAA uh, documentation. What, what does that normally entail or, or requirements for something like that? I was just out of curiosity. I, I was just curious. You no, know, I don't have a list of those items. I mean, that's again, that's FAA. Uh, it certainly has to do with they're going to be concerned about what the height of that. Um, but again, this is not a tall building. So I, I don't have a list of those items that, that's uh, not in my area. Sorry. No, that's fine. I was just curious. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fioka. Um, any other questions for Mr. Kurtz? Mr. and Mrs. Tomlinson, is there anything you would like to add to what Mr. Kurtz had to say? Um, I, nothing that's really been uh, not been said before in the prior meetings. I will say that our engineer has reviewed the FAA plans, the, uh, the criteria we have to meet, and he, he believes we're well within that criteria um, that the FAA, we can, you know, pass the FAA uh, approval with no issue. We're well beyond the slope and the height. Uh, so we're, uh, we're, we're within the scope. Thank you. And I see you have kind of a storage building in the back there. Is that gonna have some, um, it has kind of looks like some parking spaces in front. Is that gonna be some vacuums or something like that that you typically see at a car wash? Yes, the six spaces directly in front of the building are for vacuums. There'll be, um, three separate vacuum um, machines that each have two hoses so they can service six uh, parking spaces. Okay. Mr. Heiler, you had a question? I do. Um, I'd like to ask the applicants, um, could you just talk a little bit about the car wash industry today? It seems like a resurgence more than, um, I, I, and to be honest with you, when I was a banker, um, a lot of car washes in the past went, you know, they you know, they, they were hard loans to collect if, if they went bad and they didn't, they didn't fit in the right spot. So I'm sure you've done your due diligence, your research, things of that nature. So I'm not certainly not questioning that. 
But I'd like to just know a little bit about why we're seeing so many car washes, particularly laser car washes, things of that nature, uh, in this day and age. And, and, they're, and they're all being used from what I see. But I'd like to just maybe if you could just give us a little color as to what's going on in the industry. Sure. Um, so we actually started uh, our endeavor of building a car wash when we moved to Silver Lake eight years ago. Uh, we previously lived in Akron and had a good touch-free wash that was nearby. And when we moved to Silver Lake, we felt that there was a need. There wasn't one nearby. Um, so our first location was actually in Stowe on 59. And for whatever reason, the city did not allow car washes in that corridor. So as much as we wanted to be in Stowe, the location that we had in mind was not permitted to have a car wash there. So we ended up going to Cuyahoga Falls for our first location. We've been open for two years. Um, it's been a successful business for us. Um, we've learned a lot. So uh, this second time around on our part is a lot easier uh, just because we know what we're doing. We know what we what hurdles we have to go through and the approvals and everything. So we had all that in mind when we selected this um, second location. And truthfully, I've been talking to the um, real estate director through Taco Bell or the franchise that owns that Taco Bell for about a year and a half. So we've been um, really working on this site for a long time. We think it's a good location. Um, I do realize that there is a Zoom car wash right down the road. However, that's a tunnel wash, which has brushes and hours and employees. Um, our model is quite different in that um, my husband and I were car people. We, we love cars and um, we wouldn't personally take our own cars through a tunnel wash because of the chance of damage. So we fell in love with this laser wash model many years ago because it is a touch-free, it's considered the gold standard of touch-free car washes. Um, you know, there's pretty much not, much, not much we can do to damage someone's car. So that puts our mind at ease that we're not gonna damage people's car. And we're gonna give them a great wash because we, we did choose what we feel is the gold standard of, um, of that touch-free car wash system. So, um, okay, I got it. Um, so, okay, so what I'd like what I'd like to do is is picture now that this is February. It's a nice sunny day. It's unusually warm. Cars are dirty, and they decide they want to go to your car wash, which is great. Sure. And you've got thirty-one cars in line. The thirty-second car is out on Kent Road. How will you handle that? So in our current location, when there are days where we are lined up to the street, when it's a sunny Saturday sure. or Sunday, and we've had a lot of salt, um, and we're lined up to the road, we have in two years never had anybody stop on Portage Trail. If okay. they pull up to the, the parking lot, um, twofold, it, our car washes take four to five minutes each. So if they've been to our car wash, they know they're going to be in that line for about an hour, and they probably think it's not worth it at that point, and they'll come back later. Sure. Um, but also, you know, there, there's no room for them to go and they just keep driving. And that's a 25 mile an hour speed limit. So they could more easily stop probably on Portage Trail than 59. And we've never seen that happen. Okay. Thank you for answering my questions. Sure. Any other questions this evening? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to move this item onto tonight's council agenda. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions. Mr. Feldman, did you vote yes on that? I didn't hear you. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. I just wanted to make sure we had enough votes. Yep. Uh, so that will appear on tonight's council agenda this evening. Mr. and Mrs. Tomlinson, I appreciate you joining us. I'll put you back in the waiting room now and you can watch the rest of our council meeting on YouTube. Um, we do have a rather long finance committee meeting, so it might be a little while. So, um, but you're welcome to watch the rest of it there. Um, I do have a question. Are we able to join or watch the city council meeting at seven? Um, you don't, we don't typically have guests in for the city council meeting, but it is all on YouTube streaming live. Okay. On the city's YouTube site. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other, or, uh, Mr. Kurtz, any planning director's report? Nothing specific to report. Any other items to come before the planning committee tonight? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions, we stand adjourned. Mr. McIntyre, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Mrs. Harrison. I'd like to call to order the April 8th, 2021 Roads and Safety Committee meeting. 
uh, you have before you the approval of minutes from the January 14th, 2021 meeting. I move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Extensions, those minutes stand approved. You also have before you the minutes of the January 28th, 2021 meeting. I will move to approve. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Extensions. Those minutes stand approved. Uh, we have two business items uh, before us this, uh, um, this evening. Uh, the first is kind of getting an update on the uh, the AMATS connectivity grant. Mr. Kurtz, where do we stand in the process uh, of that? Uh, sure. So uh, AMATS uh, released the RFQ uh, request for qualifications. Uh, and it will be due back on April 30th. Um, the uh, next step, of course, will be to review of those, um, whoever uh, submits those, uh, whoever consultants submits uh, um, qualifications will be reviewed by AMATS and our city team. Uh, and then uh, they assume selection will be sometime in May. And given the contract approval also re, um, requires Akron's attorneys to review them. They expect the contract would be approved in July. Um, and then we'd start from there. All right. Uh, thank you for that update. Um, the other two items we have kind of go hand in hand. And I know it's something that's been brought to uh, this committee before uh, by myself, but obviously speeding issues. I, I constantly keep getting calls regarding speeding. Um, I know I talked with police chief uh, the other day regarding an incident, and um, I know that uh, Mr. McCleary and the uh, safety and signalization committee, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, expediting that and putting that on your, uh, your agenda this past Tuesday on such short notice. And I know, uh, Chief Film, I know you guys uh, spoke with that resident and are working on, on whatever you guys need to do, so I appreciate that. But I guess my question is, is what, what, what is it that we need to do, I guess, from us for the city to kind of combat this issue of speeding? You know, most of the speeding uh, that I get complaints on, and I'm sure the, the police department does too, it's, you know, we have a lot of cut through roads from Graham to, to Kent or coming over from Hudson Drive over to Darrow through Arndale and Richie. So there's a lot of cut through roads and this seems to be the high areas of speeding. Um, I know I've seen, uh, the police department out in, in driveways throughout the city. So I know it, it seems like residents are, you know, getting frustrated. So it seems like they're allowing the police department to utilize their driveways to try to catch these uh, speeders. Um, but I guess overall, from an engineering standpoint, Mr. McCleary, and um, what is it that we can do, I guess, starting from an engineering standpoint that we could do to start looking at uh, these issues and, and trying to combat it? Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Um, since the last time we discussed it, I was able to take a couple ASCE courses on traffic calming and and you know what what works and what isn't working and drawbacks to each. And and I know we talked about um, at safety and signalization. The request came in uh, on speeding the other day and uh, possibility of putting in additional stop signs. Well, the manual uniform traffic control devices does not allow us to put in uh, stop signs for control of speeding. So that's one thing that people always ask, well, just put a stop sign every intersection that could slow us down, um, but the manual doesn't allow it. But if a proper engineering study is done, and we've sent both of the requests that came in this week for uh, engineering study, um, in the coursework that I took, it was, it was mostly about traffic calming, which they talked about the vertical uh, deflection type traffic calming called speed humps, speed lumps, speed table, speed, you know, those type of things that communities try. And, and the, what they've found out over, they may work in a parking lot, uh, but what happens in, um, using these uh, vertical type uh, deflections, you have uh, problems with um, emergency responders, you have problems with snow plows, you have problems with uh, trucks, you have problems with school buses that don't have uh, seat belts with kids. 
And so they've also found that these vertical deflections on city streets become problematic in the fact that um, there is an increased uh, liability to them. So, so, so what, what they have said over the uh, last couple of years, because communities have put them in and then communities usually take them out because public transit usually hates them along with people that live near them. They're very noisy because especially certain people that like to speed, they try to make up for it in between these vertical deflections of speed bumps. So they hit the bumps and then they speed up rather than go at the same speed. So what they found is that instead of vertical deflection, the proper way of uh, slowing speed down is, or a better way is to induce a geometric horizontal alignment. And these usually, the, one of the biggest horizontal is creating a curve before a roundabout. And that's what ASC has found that has worked in communities, roundabouts and eliminating the straightaways when you're designing roads. So that is one thing. In, in communities that can afford it, they hire more policemen and it's more speed enforcement because without the enforcement, people will speed on the streets that you have mentioned. So that's what, after studying those two courses, what ASC is, ASCE is recommending. Thank you, Mr. McCleary. Uh, Chief Film, I know, uh, I think we have before us tonight, the finance committee meeting, the speed trailer that, uh, that's been, seems like long overdue. So I know that uh, you guys will put that to good use. Um, are you guys receiving, I mean, what are the calls like on a weekly basis, typically for, you know, speeding or speed complaints on some of these roads throughout the city? Actually, the most of the, the complaints have been coming in from city council as of late, um, which is okay. Cause that, that's fine. And, and uh, but uh, I can say that we, we've been out in full force. Um, they're working the complaints. Um, the, uh, as I've uh, spoke before, our, our, our protocols and our procedures as far as getting the, uh, and like when I talked to um, uh, Mrs. Ressler just today, you know, I explained that, uh, you know, we're gonna get the, uh, the stealth uh, system out on her street to get a traffic count and speed count. Um, I just uh, I talked to a resident the other day where we put that out and it was out there for almost 14 days and the average speed was 20, uh, it was seven, I think it's, it's a, it ended up being a private road, but we still, you know, we try to help everybody that we can and ended up being two miles over the speed limit. Uh, the thousands, thousand cars in that, that period was, it was two miles over speed limit. And once I explained that to the resident, um, cause a lot of residents will think that the cars are speeding when in fact they're not. I know I talked to uh, Mr. Alteri about a resident um, in his, his ward that really thought, uh, uh, you know, the, the cars were going a lot faster than they are. Um, so with that, we are doing traffic studies. We're working with the engineer department. Um, and once we identify problem areas, we're, we're out there aggressively working those. Thank you. I, I know I can attest to speed. Speed can be deceiving to the, to the, to the naked eye. It's really hard. You're right. 25 miles an hour to your eye. looks like they're doing 35, 40 miles an hour. So it is deceiving. I, but I do appreciate, uh, again, uh, the efforts that we're making. I know that we got the speed trailer before us and, and uh, you guys expediting these concerns on the residents' behalf. Uh, Mr. Heiler, I see you have your hand up. I do. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief Police, uh, Police Chief Film, uh, you and I had a discussion this week and I showed you um, some things that I saw in Roswell, Georgia last week uh, in terms of its speed advice and their uh, solar power operated. I think they're like $3,500 each. I think you found out. And I'm not sure, but I, I guess I just wanted to request that uh, of Ms. McClary and you and the other members of the committee, if you would take a look at those and see possibly what the feasibility of using those would be. I, um, uh, and, you know, see if maybe in a test program or something like that, they, they don't seem that expensive. I, I know that um, there's a couple of communities I go into where they have, uh, where they have those here in Ohio. And it's just, uh, it kind of makes you conscious. I, and I, and I remember what uh, Ms. McClary, uh, remember what you said about um, that, People kind of get used to them, think that type of thing. But I'm not one of those people. When I see it, it 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 does affect me. But uh, uh, but anyway, having said that, if, uh, Chief Film, if you could just comment on what it was I presented to you, you know more about it than I do. 
<laughs> well, I um, I know more about it only because the uh, engineering department had had uh, one of the individuals uh, actually look it up. I don't have that information in front of me, but uh, so basically, it's a it's a uh, speed device that you would put on a pole. It has a speed limit, and it's, it's solar powered, and then it would indicate your speed as you drove by. I, we we had them in a couple of our schools. And I know, Mr. McClary, you can comment on those, how long they lasted. Um, that, that one of the problems with those units is that uh, how durable they are. And so I would, this is, um, you know, it, it's, I'm more of an enforcement uh, division and I would probably turn this back over to engineering for any uh, elaboration sure. on this. Right. Mr. McCleary, I'm, I'm assuming we're talking, these are probably the ones that are similar that are out in front of like your Fish Creek Elementary School. It, yeah, Mr. McCleary. Mr. McIntyre, um, the one that was presented, um, it, it, Justin Painter, our, our uh, sign person, uh, looked them up, and these are a little bit more high tech than the ones that are in front of our schools. Um, they are solar powered. The ones in front of our schools come off electricity at the, the pool, and they were part of the. Um, um, Safe routes to school system in the state of Ohio actually did the installation, and and they worked for a while, um, and they would flash. The ideal thing would be flashing during school time, but also it, these flashed at whatever time and program that the ODOT put put together for them, and the school times go on and off during the day based on recess, and and so. We already have school flashers that are yellow and a sign that says 20 miles an hour. So, um, Mr. Heiler, we did uh, discuss it at uh, safety and signalization, and the previous experiences with the flashing has has not been too good with the ones at the school, and so they are not highly. It, people did not slow down. And like, like I said before, after so many days, signs, and th they, they kind of grew in the background. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chief Film, real quick, we, and the chairman and I had some conversations about uh, the radar speed sign. We had talked about uh, in finance, uh, you know, two versus one. And I know we got one on the agenda. Um, you know, uh, and I'm just reading some of the things I, I've looked up. Aside from price, radar speed signs seem to be the best option. They offer proven effectiveness without the negative impact to non-speeders, infrastructure, and cars. So I guess my question, Chief, is, uh, how do you evaluate the, how do you analyze or evaluate um, the effectiveness of that radar speed sign? Obviously, I think they work, but the use and maybe purchasing another if we, but how do, how do we know that so we can say, hey, let's get another one? Well, my goal is, is to run a study prior to, to putting the trailer out and then run a study after the trailer has gone. And that, that'll tell us, that, that speed study will tell us whether or not it was effective. So we get some comparative data then before yes. or after. Okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there any other further questions? Mr. McCleary. Uh, um, I'd like to address Mr. Feldman. Uh, on State Route 8, I mean, the expressway project where you're going from a normal speed into a construction zone, they mm -hmm. have proven to be very effective in a construction zone. And ODOT did put them out last year. I don't know if they're out this year yet, but uh, in conjunction, at the same time, the state of Ohio gave a grant to the city of Stowe Police because they knew that just having these signs out on a daily basis without enforcement would they become again without the enforcement, which we need the police officers to be on Route 8 to enforce the speed. So the first time they see the their, what speed they're going and some people will slow down. And if there's not enforcement, then, then it doesn't work. So it needs a combination of both. Well, thank you. Did we get the, um, did we get 
the grant uh, again this year for enforcement for this season? Uh, they haven't they haven't brought it out yet. I actually emailed, and I know that the last meeting that we had with this with ODOT, um, because several departments are affected, you know, are eligible for the grant. Um, it is coming out. However, we have not seen it yet. So the enforcement that we are currently doing out there is uh, primarily day shift and afternoon shift officers uh, while the workers are out there. Okay, thank you. Mr. Feldman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just real quick, Chief Film, I appreciated, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, Higby to Cox to Fish Creek to Call to Young pretty daily a number of times. And I've seen some enforcement going on this past week and was happy every time I saw it. So um, it was multiple times on that route and uh, it was good. So uh, I think just from my view, enforcement, increasing and uh, and I certainly appreciated that driving by each one of those police car lights going on so thank you and, and I really thank you Mr. Feldman I really want to give um, credit to Sergeant Dan Drummond who's overseeing that program he, he's doing all the work and getting the people assigned out there so the credit goes to him so I'd like to acknowledge that thank, thank you Chief Feldman thank you Mr. McCleary uh, is there any other further questions is there anything else to come before the roads and safety committee Seeing none, I will move to adjourn. Second. The move and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No mentions. We stand adjourned. All right. I'd now like to call the uh, finance committee meeting of April 8th, 2021 to order. Uh, you have before you the uh, approval of minutes for the meeting of March 5th, 2021. I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Uh, they moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Noes, abstentions, those minutes stand approved. I will now entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes from the Finance Committee of March 25th, 2021. So moved. Second. They moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Noes, abstentions, those minutes stand approved. Um, I'm going to take things a little out of order because we do have a number of legislative items. I, we're going to hold off on the budget financial reports to the end so that we can go through these uh, uh, these legislative items. Um, do we have, all right, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, letter A, Ms. Paxton. Thank you. Um, this is a, um, basically uh, we're upgrading the AV capabilities of both uh, City Hall Council Chambers and the community room at the safety building. Uh, in Council Chambers, we're gonna be adding two cameras, wireless microphone speakers, and the ability to stream. And um, this will provide the ability for people to participate both on-site and remote, and we will still use the, um, with the use of Zoom. Um, in the community room, we're gonna add projectors, or one projector speakers, will uh, be able to stream and record. Um, this will increase their ability to um, have training in there as well as presentations and um, hopefully use the room more efficiently. Right, uh, well, Ms. Paxson, you have one more item, letter E. Do you wanna go ahead and just explain that one and we can knock those two out of the way? Sure, that'd be great. Um, Ashton Stound, um, we currently have uh, panic buttons for the employees around here that uh, basically deal with the public. They're currently hardwired. Um, the employees use these uh, um, in the event that they feel that they need assistance and they're not able to pick up the phone to call for help. Um, there's a button they can push and it will uh, trigger in dispatch and then dispatch can you know, either call police or, you know, uh, figure out the emergency if there is one. And we're just upgrading from a uh, wired situation to a wireless panic alarm system. All right, questions regarding uh, items A or E from Ms. Paxton. Mrs. Harrison. Thank you, Mrs. Ma Mr. McIntyre. Ms. Paxton, I wanted to thank you for all your help and work in the council chambers and meeting with Mr. McIntyre and myself to make sure we get the right solution in here. And I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Sure, thank you. Uh, further questions? Seeing none, I will move to assign a number to both of uh, items A and E and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So Second. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 
Yes. Yes. yes. No's, abstentions. Uh, items A and E will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Um, Mr. Brooker, you have quite a few items, so I'm just going to go ahead and let you go down through them so we can just, uh, we're just going to go out of order a little bit so you can just cover all the items that you have. Uh, so with that being said, item B is first. All right, thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Uh, item B, Cleveland Freight Liner and Henderson Equipment. Um, basically, that is uh, a combined package. Cleveland Freight Liner will provide the chassis. Henderson will provide the upgrade um, to put the truck together. And that is a complete dump package, includes a dump body, salt spreader, snow plow, all the uh, equipment we need to take care of the roads. And that truck will be replacing a 2006 International, which once we get approval, we'll get a price on trade-in. Um, with the truck still being in semi-decent condition, um, we should pretty get a pretty decent trade-in. So the price you see will not be the complete price. We do not have a trade-in allowance yet. Um, I can figure probably in the fifteen twenty thousand dollars range, we should be able to get a trade in. All right. Uh, next item is the, so is the Mars Electric one yours, Mr. Brooker? Did yeah, I, just I can. Get to, you want me to just continue on with all mine? Yeah, that's that. Just good. That's fine. All right. Let me just let. I'll continue on. If you have any questions, we'll get them at the end. How's that? All right. Thank you. Okay. So the number two, Mars Electric. Um, this will be a replacement project to replace eight of the original light poles that were put on the boulevard here. Um, from or some right off of Graham Road, and there's a couple original poles off of Darrow Road still. We replaced some poles a few years back. Uh, the ones that we're replacing now are pretty well rotted out to the point that uh, a couple of them are going to be a safety hazard before long. And then in conjunction with the poles, we're also going to replace all the light fixtures along the boulevard with uh, new LED fixtures, which should save us quite a bit of a uh, the savings every year uh, in electric. Also with these fixtures, they are uh, a little new technology, which is really nice that we, uh, we're really excited to see as they do have a dimmable feature and we can dim them and set a timer on them. So for instance, in the uh, event when we're having our Christmas lights um, out there on the boulevard, these can automatically be dimmed so they're not just turned all the way off. And then in the evening hours, uh, we can bring them back up later, You know to get more light on the on the roadway itself. So it's a really nice feature. Um, and that price includes all the, the poles, fixtures, everything to put them in. And that work will be done in-house with uh, city employees. The next one on my agenda is number three, um, is the Tim Lally Chevrolet. That is a replacement city pool vehicle. We did have a pool vehicle that was used for years on lease. Um, we decided to go a different route. We found it's a better option for us just to buy the cars, um, especially with the new cost of vehicles. Um, the lease cost, honestly, is not prohibited anymore for us. We don't get a big break. So this vehicle we're going to put in um, from Tim Alley is to be used for multiple departments. It'll be used to uh, travel when people go in and out of town. We try to uh, rotate the cars. They get a little higher mileage to different departments. They may not use them as much. Um, so that will replace one vehicle that we haven't had for um, several months now. The next one, utility truck equipment. Utility truck equipment is the state bid vendor for um, the, the bucket truck, for a better term. That is uh, what our signal tech uses on all of our light poles, uh, all of our traffic signals, anything that the municipality owns. That will be replacing a 1998 signal van which has been our backup for years. Uh, it's getting to the point where it needs a, some serious maintenance issues have been coming along lately. We've been putting a lot of money into it. It's really not feasible. Uh, so we'll move the other truck down, which is a 2001 into our kind of a reserve status. Uh, when we have multiple calls, somebody else will take that truck out and the new truck will become our new frontline vehicle. Um, the next one online for me is the Malibu and that will replace the car that's currently used by the zoning department. The car they have now is a 2002 Ford Taurus, which was a hand-me-down to them. That car uh, will be kept in the rotation. However, it'll go down to a LEAF, uh, the LEAF program car. Uh, the last two police cars we received um, for better purposes are going to the scrapyard. They were the old uh, K9 cars that you replaced last year and they're not even salvageable. So. 
this car will definitely be used uh, right away in the fall when, when leaf pickup starts. And the last one I have tonight is Synovia Solutions. Synovia Solutions is our current um, provider for our GIS or our GPS, I'm sorry, the units in our, our city vehicles. We've had Synovia Solutions for quite a few years. Uh, they've proven to do a good job for us. However, just like anything else that's um, technology related, they are no longer compatible, the units we have. They were 3G and just like your cell phones, you know, they're no good anymore. So um, the new stuff, new standards and specs, they're a 5G unit. One thing nice about Synovia is they provide all the equipment at no cost to us. We I did a lot of checking earlier this year to switch and see what kind of other providers there are. But Synovia will give us all the equipment um, at no cost. It's just the monitoring and we sign a three-year contract. So that cost in there is a three-year contract, but we will break it out you know, into three equal payments. And after that, that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brooker. Uh, questions regarding uh, these items. The only question I had on the, on the GPS system, um, you say that's that's a three year agreement. So any maintenance or anything, it's it's all they're going to be. That's all. Okay. Uh, I just yeah, I just want to make yeah, sure nothing comes back. Yeah, separately. what's really good about this program is uh, we've had them in the past, and if anything goes down in any of the trucks, all we do is pull out the truck, send it back. Within a couple of weeks, we have a new one back or one that's rebuilt. So they they've been real real good with us. And what's really kind of nice about this, uh, Mr. McIntyre, and it's, you guys were talking about speed enforcement. Um, and how people think you're going faster than what you are. This equipment has actually made the employees feel better. Um, we used to get calls all the time that our plow trucks were speeding. They were going too fast down the road. We can go back and pinpoint that and, and come up with the, you know, the exact uh, time and proximity of where they were and how fast they were going. Um, it's really done a good job for us. It's proven to show that we've been on streets that people say we haven't plowed or picked up their leaves or even you like to say for speed, we've we've had several employees that uh, uh, were kind of nervous about it at first, getting in there like you know, dad's watching, you know, my driving skills. Um, but now they really appreciate it being in there because it does prove that you know, they do a good job. Uh, thank you. Further questions? All right, seeing none, we'll, uh, we have four legislative items to move on, and then two committee motions. So uh, first, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to items B, D, F, and G and move them on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Uh, moved, I'll second, it's been uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No abstentions. Those will appear on tonight's city council meeting. I will now move to authorize the purchase of a 2021 Chevy Malibu for the zoning department. So moved. Second. The move it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions. That is approved. Uh, I will now move to uh, purchase 20 GPS systems for the service vehicles from Synovia Solutions. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions. That is approved. All right, uh, backing up here a little bit, uh, Chief Film, you have two items on the agenda. You want to go ahead and cover those two? Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Okay, the first one will be, uh, I believe, a C. This is for the Kent State University for our CAD annual maintenance fee. I'm ask, asking for authorization and expenditure of up to $83,347 for the annual maintenance and new world CAD system. Um, just to break that down a little bit, that does include our maintenance and also our, our Verizon Wireless Mobile uh, monthly charge. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, as of right now, we are set um, to move over to the county CAD system on uh, May 11th. Uh, this, so what we're actually, the actual expenditure, if everything goes right, will be for the first six months of the Kent State um, uh, contract will be $41,673.50 and we will actually get some of that back also because we're leaving early. Um, this is our annual maintenance fee. Of our, this is our fifth year with Kent State. It has been a, it has been a, a very good um, uh, relationship with them and I would be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Chief Film. 
Uh, seeing that, is that just item C or did you cover your other item too? Uh, we'll go to the next one is um, K. Uh, item K, I believe. Yes. And this is for Larkwood Green Enterprise LLC. Um, I'm as asking for authorization uh, for the expenditure up to $148,344.80. And this is for the purchase of uh, two uh, 2021 Ford F-150 Super Crew police uh, responders and two 2021 Ford police utility uh, explorers. And we have discussed this at the prior council meetings. It's been approved in this year's budget. And I will stand for any questions. Questions for Chief Film. Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief Film, one of those is going to take that radar speed sign where it belongs, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Further questions? All right, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to item C and K and move it on to tonight's city council. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No abstentions. Uh, that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, Mr. McCleary, items H, I, and J are yours. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Um, the, uh, the first one, H, is uh, solicit bids for Lakeview Highland Detention, Silver Springs Drive, Storm Sewer, and Wetmore Street, Storm Sewer. And that'll be going with conjunction with the water line replacement, same time. Um, that, that project will, I mean, these bids will complete all the stormwater bids that were going out this year. We have previously secured uh, authorization for the other projects that we're gonna do this year for stormwater. The second one, I, is to solicit bid for the Graham Fish Creek funded project. And we are completed with the plans and we need to submit our PSNE package to ODOT early May. So we're asking for authorization to, to, um, to solicit bids for that, which will be part of the PSNE package. And then J was B to solicit bids for all the remaining waterline projects in 2021. And that would be the Elm Wetmore waterline and and that's the combination one with our storm sewer. Then there's the Stow Road Phase Five, the water line replacement on Kent Road, the four inch line replacement, and the tie ins, the Uniondale Burger Moreland water line replacement, the water tower mi mitigation system, the South Sanford water line replacement, the Homewood Brookside Acorn and Caleb water line improvement project, which will allow us to continue with the lowest ISO rating. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, I just had one quick question. I know there's obviously there's a lot of uh, great improvements on here. Of uh, some of the ones that are going to be uh, uh, for under item J, uh, are, is there, or Mr. Ren, this might be a question for you too. Are a lot of these roads included on this year's uh, um road program to be resurfaced? If not, are they going to be included on next seasons to, I know you guys have done a great job of uh, trying to follow up, follow behind, if not the same season uh, with these improvements. I just want to make sure, you know, the roads that will be damaged are either going to be covered under this year's road program or next seasons. Yeah, they're scheduled uh, to be, that's why Jerry is attacking them this year because we'll be doing the paving next year. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. McCleary, where is the Lakeview Highland Detention Pond going? Well, with school board approval, it'll go in front of where the parking lot is in front of the Lakeview building, which would be just directly west of Highland. And th that final approval has to come from the school board. We met with the new business director and uh, and he said the earliest we can get on the school board would be the end of April or 1st of May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, just to follow up. And then the Graham Road Fish Creek improvements, will those be similar to the Graham Darrow improvements? So uh, I can ask a question when construction's going on and answer it, I guess. 
Uh, yeah, it would be, it's very similar in the sense that we, are, we have a ODOT safety grant to do that and we're removing the traffic islands. I think on, on the project down at Graham and Fish Creek, there's a lot more pedestrian traffic, even though Graham, Graham and 91, there's a lot. And we're gonna have enhanced um, sidewalks that stand, you know, crosswalks that'll stand out better okay. in that and, location. And I certainly appreciate your work on, um, on the water line improvements and replacements. So thank you, Mr. McCoy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I have to give credit to Jerry Dolson on the water and on the storm sewer projects. Mike Jones has been spearheading that. Uh, thank you, Mr. McClary. I, I just had one question, I guess, regarding the Graham Fish Creek improvements. Uh, you know, as far as pedestrian improvements, I know I was there a few weeks ago and one of the residents there in the towers, um, you know, they're blind. And I guess, what are we doing to enhance, I guess, the pedestrian signal uh, the push buttons and the ped heads, are those going to be your typical push buttons or are they going to be enhanced in terms of like audio or uh, I guess sound, I guess, for those um, with uh, vision impairments or hearing impairments? Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Um, it's an excellent question. The company that, um, it was a combination of AECOM and Prime Engineering that did this safety project. Uh, the engineer that was the lead engineer on the crosswalk is legally blind. And he was hired specifically because we know there's two, at one time, maybe two or three residents that are legally blind between Orange Seldes Towers and the other uh, high rise. And they do walk in that intersection probably more than any other intersection. So, so the these will all be um, totally adaptable to, to the um, legally blind people that are there. And the type of equipment is similar to what went in last year on a service project put in uh, with Victor Allen down at uh, Kent Road in 91. And, and Nick, if you wanna add anything because you took a lot of calls from these residents over the years. Yeah, I just wanted to add that that is the reason that the uh, islands are coming out because we couldn't do the auditory crosswalks when you have islands. So that's the reason the islands are coming out as part of the safety grant. Thank you. Further questions? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign the numbers to H, I, and J and move them on to tonight's city council. So moved. Okay. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, those will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, I think we're down to L, Mr. Wren. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. This is uh, to solicit formal bids to reside the, the Leona Ferris Lodge. Uh, we did put on a small patio on the back and did a little bit of siding at that point, but this is to complete the building and to get a uniform look out there. So happy to answer any questions. Questions for Mr. Wren. When do you anticipate uh, this, once this is approved uh, tonight, where do you, when do you anticipate this uh, being started or being going out to bid? Uh, I believe the ribbon cutting is late June or early July. So the goal is to have this done prior to that date. Okay. Yes, it would be July 1st. Okay. July 1st, is it, that's the cutting, or the ribbon cutting ceremony? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, further questions? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions. That will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, we have two items left. Chief Stone. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. The first one is for the uh, Chevy Tahoe for uh, our command staff vehicle. This is a uh, 2021 Tahoe that uh, Cost is $38,259. It's on the state bid list, and we did discuss it, I think, last month during our um, budget meetings. The, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Tahoe is going to be replacing a 2004 Crown Victoria, ultimately, and as we move our vehicles through our, their procession and their lifespan, that'll be uh, replacing that, and it'll take the place of a command staff vehicle, and we just move them all on down as they age, and uh, that would be that one. You want me to just go ahead with the next one, too? 
Uh, yes, sir. Okay, and then the other one is for a purchase of an ambulance. This is a uh, Lifeline ambulance. They are also on the state bid list. They cost a little bit more, uh, $222,000. And we try to get about 10 years out of the ambulances. Uh, they do about five years in the frontline service. And then as the mileage builds up and the repairs build up, we start to move them to the back. This will be replacing a 2008 uh, ambulance that is our last diesel unit that has 124,000 miles on it and it uh, is becoming a real burden to us. So we'll be looking forward to replacing that. These also, we have lately have been pricing them out with the striker cot loading system already built in. Uh, this is one of the systems that the BWC uh, got us uh, a few years back in 2014, I believe it was, uh, on a grant. And it takes the uh, load off the uh, paramedics lifting the patient into the ambulance. It does it automatically now. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Chief Stone. As far as the ambulance that it's replacing, uh, is that the ambulance, is that coming out of service? And if so, is there a salvage value to that ambulance that will offset the cost of this new ambulance? We'll probably turn it over to the service department and they can make the determination if they want to utilize it some other capacity or put it out to auction. Um, we couldn't get a trade in in the years gone by. We were able to trade some of our ambulances, but this one is far enough gone that uh, they don't want to do a trade in. Okay, thank you. Uh, further questions, Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just real quick, Chief Stone, no, uh, no real question, but in, in preparing for finance committee, I uh, randomly asked a few residents how much they think an ambulance costs, and they have no clue. So, <laughs> what I'm, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you said the cost because uh, um, it was funny to listen to some of their comments when I was just kind of randomly reviewing the agenda. So. Um, thank you for saying $222,836. So ambulances are expensive. And we certainly support them. So, Absolutely. Thanks. I can't wait till we uh, talk in the next year or two about our fire truck. Then you can really yes. be done. Yes, I've already heard <laughs> the chairman and I have already talked about that with a little bit. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, further questions? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to items M and N and move them on to tonight's city council meeting. So, so moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions. That will appear on tonight's city council meeting. I don't think uh, I missed, did we miss any of the business items? I think we covered them all. We got them all, Jeremy. All right. With that being said, uh, let's jump back up to Mr. Costello. Uh, you have any uh, updates on the financial reports? Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. The uh, monthly reports have been distributed as well as the current bill listing. If you want, I can go through a little bit on that now, or you want me to wait till the council meeting, your, your call. Um, how long do you think it'll take? Oh, I'm just trying to look at the spirit of time. We're moving pretty good today. Yeah, I'd say maybe three or four minutes tops. Go ahead and let's go through it now then. Okay. Uh, the bill listing was in the amount of about $2 million. Payroll was 700,000. Medical and dental benefits were 530,000. OPE pensions was 131,000. Life insurance at 5,000. BWC payments were 23,500. Uh, performance guarantee on the landscape refund was 15.5,000. Tax refunds of 13,000. Parks and Rec had refunds of 1,400. And we had water refunds of about 650. Um, on April 1st, we implemented a different procedure to assist with the tax filings this year. We've asked taxpayers to schedule an appointment by dialing 330-689-2849, and we've established a new temporary location down in the boards and commissions room. We'll take walk-ins, but those with an appointment are given priority. And so far, this procedure has worked very well and is allowing us to manage both the workflow and the people flow. Tax collections this time last year was down around 500,000. That's comparing 19 to 20. This year, comparing 20 to 21, we're up about 300,000. You go back and compare 19 to 21, we're flat. We're still reviewing all of the report numbers and we'll be issuing our first status report for 2021 in the near future to council. That's all I have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Costello. Questions for Mr. Costello regarding the uh, financial report. All right, seeing none, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. 
So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions. We stand adjourned. Mrs. Harrison, I'll turn it. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. I'd like to call to order the committee of the whole meeting of April 8th, 2021. All of our council members are present this evening. Our first item of business, approval of minutes of the committee of the whole from March 25th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. To so moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions. Those minutes stand approved. We have um, our first business item, replacement of pages to our codified ordinances. Um, Ms. Six or is Ms. Channel or one of you handling this item? Um, yeah, it's just the updates to the codified ordinances that we submit every year. And it looked like these were to be in line with state code. Is that correct? Yeah. Are there any questions from anyone in council about this item? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to move this item onto tonight's council agenda. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions. That will appear on the agenda tonight. The next item we have is a motion for a liquor license um, for a new location at Puff Enterprises, Ohio, Smoke Connection, 3230, 3732 Darrow Road. Um, I would entertain a motion that we do not require a hearing for this request. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. All of those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions. Um, Ms. Villers, I will place this in the folder for you to process back, please. Uh, our next item is an executive session to discuss the compensation of a public employee under 12122B1. I would entertain a motion to adjourn into executive session. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Ms. Villers, will you please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Eiler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. We will now adjourn into executive session. Ms. Six, who do you need present for this from your staff? Ms. Kelly. I will remind everybody else who is here that you will remain live on YouTube um, and we will return after we adjourn from executive session.
We'll give everybody else a minute to return here. Council is returning from executive session. I would entertain a motion to reconvene. Moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Will the clerk please call the roll? Oh. Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Steve, you're yeah. muted. Sorry about that. Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. We've now reconvened from executive session. We're to discuss the compensation of a public employee under 121.22 B1. We have one piece of legislation coming out of that executive session. I would like to entertain or ask the clerk to please read that by its title. 2021-75, an ordinance confirming the law director's appointment of Mary Beth DeGravio as assistant prosecutor of the city of Stowe, establishing compensation for said appointee and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Ms. Villers. I would entertain a move, motion to move this onto tonight's council agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions. That will appear on tonight's council agenda. Is there any other items to come before council or committee of the whole this evening? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, committee of the whole will now be, uh, is everybody in favor? Please signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, we stand adjourned. Council meeting will begin at 7 p.m. We have a brief recess here. Um, please remember we are still on YouTube.
Yeah. All right, everybody, it is 7 p.m. I would like to call to order the Stowe City Council meeting of April 8th, 2021 at 8 p.m. Would the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Present. Harrison? Here. Tyler? Here. McIntyre? Here. Altieri? Here. Yoga? Here. Feldman? Here. Thank you, Ms. Villers. We will now have prayer and pleasure of the legions led by at-large Councilwoman Christina Shaw. Thank you. I want to start out with a quote that I found, and I think that it's um, great for all of us. It goes, respect for ourselves guides our morals and respect for others guides our manners. Let us bow our heads. Dear God, please give us the strength to face the day and see the many blessings it contains. Give us the courage to walk on, no matter how long the path or how many turns in the road. Guide our thoughts so we will walk in love and peace and with gratitude in our hearts. Amen. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. We will now move on to our next business item, approval of minutes of the regular council meeting of March 25th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, those minutes stand approved. Ms. Villers, any reading of communication? All items were distributed accordingly. We'll move on to committee of council reports. Planning committee did meet tonight and we will have one item on the council agenda later this evening. Mr. Fioka. Public improvements did not meet this evening, uh, but I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions. Any questions for Mr. Fioka? Seeing none, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Madam President. Roads and safety uh, committee met this evening. We had two items for discussion. Uh, Mr. Kurtz gave the uh, committee an update uh, on the AMATS uh, connectivity grant as well as we talked uh, and the city engineer and police chief kind of gave us an update on where we stand for uh, speeding and traffic calming uh, around the city. Uh, finance committee met. We have a number of legislative items on the agenda this evening and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Any questions for Mr. McIntyre? Seeing none, committee of the whole report, committee of the whole did meet tonight and we will have two items on the council agenda. Any questions on those items? Seeing none, we will move on to the audience participation portion. Ms. Villers, I believe we have no live public comment, but you have several comments to read. Is that correct? Correct. All right, whenever you're ready. Diana Golovecchio, I was a clerk of courts from 2016 through February 2019. When I left the office, Amber Zibertowski inherited a well-ran, efficient, properly staffed office of 19 full-time employees. Today, she has just 14 full-time employees. Through attrition and early cuts, she has saved the city of Stowe over $170,000 in payroll expenses since becoming clerk in 2019. Forcing an additional illegal cut of $200,000 will require her to lay off another six employees. Clerk's office will not run on fewer employees and will be dangerously understaffed. This will result in backlogs of critical safety services, including temporary protection orders for domestic violence victims, arrest warrants, uh, commitments to jail, the BCI fingerprint print processing, just to name a few. The city of Stowe has a legal obligation to fund both the court and the clerk's operations. Yet not one single question was asked about the clerk's proposed budget or operating needs at the March 25th hearing. 
it appears the only reason council voted to cut the clerk's budget is because Judge Hoover told you to in order to help her opponent, Mike Razor. This is all the more outrageous when considering Judge Hoover had the highest expenditures in the history of the court in 2020, despite the drop in caseload. His record-breaking expenditures included $5,000 cash bonuses to who to two highest paid employees, Rick Klinger and Aaron DeBoard, funding Judge Hoover's double dipping salary of well over $200,000 while forcing the clerk to make a $200,000 cut is particularly obscene. As a former clerk, I understand the importance of the council or of the office, and I urge you to quit playing politics and fund its operations. The safety of your residents depend on it and the law requires it. Eric M. Sizintley, I, I read that Stowe City Council passed its 2021 annual operating budget with a $200,000 staff reduction for the Stowe Municipal Court Clerk of Court's office. You may not know, but previous, but previous to the Cauga Falls Municipal Court moving to Stowe, I served as the elected Clerk of Courts for 27 years. I am familiar with the Ohio Revised Code statutes that define and dictate the elected clerk's responsibilities and your legal obligations as the host city for the court. In addition to your fiduciary duty to the citizens of Stowe, your action on this matter affects all people of the 16 communities served by the court. From what I was able to glean from the clerk of court Zebratowski's presentation to finance committee and city council, you were given more than enough data and unrefuted explanations to justify her requested current and future operational needs. The comparison of the clerk's expenditures, clerk's expenditures over the last 10 years reflect a minimal increase in general fund expenditures and a decrease in wages from 10 years ago, a record worthy of any elected official in public service today. The budget cuts you have imposed are excessive and will prevent the clerk from administering her statutory duties in a timely manner, which then jeopardizes the safety and welfare of the public. By restoring the requested budget amount, Clerk Zebratowski can continue to properly serve the people of the court's jurisdiction. Mike Barnes, 517 Park Ridge, Mineral Falls. I am a Mineral Falls resident and a two-year term councilman. I have very serious concerns regarding your decision to defund the clerk's office by $200,000. Moving the court to Stowe 10 years ago made the city of Stowe fiscally responsible for funding the operation of the court and the clerk of court's office. Those duties are well-defined by law and critical to the safety and well-being of the citizens you have agreed to serve. Recovery from the aftermath of COVID-19 will take time. However, one certainty is the court's caseload and the demands on the clerk's office will only increase. Reviewing available documents and the March 25th Finance Committee meeting makes this clear. We both, while both divisions made cuts, the clerk's office clearly took the lead. Expenses were reduced early Clerk staffing was cut in 2020, all collections were significantly increased, but records and statements from the clerk's office also clearly indicate that any further cuts will negatively impact the court's operation as well as critical safety services to communities like Monroe Falls. I understand the need to carefully watch how those tax dollars are spent, but please ask yourselves the tough questions. While the clerk's office expenses have steadily declined, the court had a significant spike in 2020. Why? Is it true Judge Hoover paid $10,000 in bonuses with pay increases for key people last December? Is this drastic cut to the fiscally responsible clerk's office really in the best in interest of your citizens and the communities you agreed to serve through the Stowe Municipal Court? There seems to be other agendas at play. For the record, I am a conservative Republican, but with a conscience. We share a common burden in that we were elected to first serve the best interests of the people before our government body. The needs of any political party come last. I ask you to please think carefully about your course of action. Lives will depend on it. The expected $500,000 deficit is large, but honestly, it was possibly the city of Stowe signed, signed up for when council agreed to host the municipal court. Best of luck to each of you. Sitting on city council can be tough and think a thankless job, Thank you for sitting in those seats. Sarah Klein, former mayor, city of Stowe, 2670 Northland Street, Cauga Falls. 
I am disheartened by your decision to irresponsibly cut the budget for the Stowe Municipal Court Clerk of Courts Office. As a former Stowe Council member and former Stowe Mayor, I worked closely with the court for over 12 years. I saw firsthand the critical role the clerk's office plays in supporting public safety and effective administration of justice for the Stowe Court District. I also saw firsthand throughout multiple clerk's administrations the way that office continuously worked to streamline processes and the conscience of the taxpayers' dollars. There is a minimum level of funding required to maintain operations and support public safety when administering the processes of the court. Your decision to cut the clerk's budget now means that the office cannot operate with the best interests of the public in mind. Rather, the clerk and her staff will be forced to make decorian changes to meet your arbitrary short-sighted budget cuts. The host city is required by law to provide a minimum operating budget to the municipal court, including the clerk's office. Your failure to meet this standard is a um, dereliction of duty on your part. I remind you that your positions require commitment to doing what is right, not what is beneficial for your political party or what makes for a catchy soundbite. I urge you to restore the funding of the clerk of courts. Mayor Nick Molnar, 9691 Valley View Road, Macedonia. It has come to my attention that you recently passed annual operating budget that contains a $200,000 reduction for the clerk of court staffing retroactive to January 1st, 2021. As previously explained, explained by Clerk Zebertowski, the clerk's office is currently staffed bare minimum levels to accomplish the required task. The office will actually need more people in the court's caseload increases this summer. As mayor, I am fully aware of the importance role of the clerk's office administering critical public safety duties to ensure the safety of my residents, temporary, protection orders for domestic violence, FBI background checks, commitments to jail, releases from jail, arrest warrants, certified records, or felony prosecutions, et cetera. These are just some of the tasks the clerk's office performs every day to keep our residents safe. Due to your drastic cut, these critical duties will suffer, putting the public at risk. I urge you to reconsider your dangerous cut to the clerk's office personnel and the safety of all the citizens of Stowe District depends on it. Chris Heidel felt 4480 Chatwood Drive. My name is Chris. I am not only a resident of Stowe for the last 21 years, but I have also had the privilege of being the deputy clerk at the Stowe Municipal Court for almost 13 years. As any of my coworkers will tell you, I am fiscally conservative and I'm proud to be so. I will say, however, the decision to cut the clerk's budget is not fiscally conservative, but instead is fiscally irresponsible. As a council, I have heard many times how pro-police you are. You cannot possibly be pro-police and yet defund your supporting agency. As a resident of the city, I am deeply concerned about the safety risk that you are imposing not only on the residents, but also on the residents of 15 other agencies that we serve. Eliminating almost half of our 14 employees to meet your budget demands will cause a serious backlog of work. Everything from processing arrest warrants issuing warrant on complaints, filing new charges, reports to BCI and processing protection orders will all be delayed. By enforcing this budget cut, you are essentially defunding the police by defunding the agency that supports them. All of their hard work will be delayed and the lives will be put at risk. As a resident of Stowe, a proud clerk of the court employee and a daughter of a retired police officer, I find this appalling. You have a responsibility to the citizens of the city, as well as the citizens of 15 other jurisdictions to consider the damage and the danger that these cuts will impose. Contrary to what some politicians would like you to believe, we are an extremely capable, professional and dedicated staff who all take great pride in our work. I challenge you to ask any police officer, dispatcher or records clerk of any police department that we serve, and I am certainly, I am certain they will agree this is an extremely stressful, fast paced job. Doing it with less employees is not feasible. It is downright dangerous to our citizens. Sandra Kurt, Summit County Clerk of Courts, 140 Mayfield Avenue, Akron. I am greatly distressed in the radical cut to the clerk, Stowe Clerk of Courts 2021 budget. And I hope for all the sake of the public safety of the residents of Stowe Municipal Court District, the funds are reinstated. Half of my 
public service career has been as a council member like yourselves, both on Ac the city of Akron Council and as your at-large council member of Summit County Council. The remainder of my public service has been as Summit County Clerk of Courts. As such, I have a unique experience of serving in your role as budget approver and Clerk Zabertowski's role presenting a budget request. In either reviewing or presenting budgets, I have never seen such an extreme cut, even in the years of severe cuts during the Great Recession. Clerk Zebertowski has been extremely responsible with her budget, exercising uh, consistent physical, fiscal restraint throughout her tenure, much more than the other municipal clerks in the county. In fact, the clerk's actual expenditures has seen her in presentation at the same level that it was in 2011, an accomplishment that I doubt is true of any other department or operation. The rationale for a $200,000 cut is based on faulty premise. That is the quantity of court cases that will remain static from 2020. I know of no other court that is planning for zero growth from a year of a once in a century pandemic and shutdown of business. To make such a drastic cut requiring layoff of municipal staff members from an already reduced level defunds public safety staff who process protection orders among other critical duties. A common concern for clerks throughout the state is that the protection order isn't processed immediately upon receipt and the resident suffers violence or even death as a result. I know none of you want a loss of life on your conscience simply because you made a rash budget decision. Please prioritize the safety of your constituents by rescinding the $200,000 cut and approving Clerk Zebertowski's fiscally conservative budget as submitted. Michelle Roller, 4075 Beckley Road. I am a Stowe resident and 18 year employee of the Stowe Municipal Court. I started here in 2003 with 25 clerks and now there are 14. You want to make cuts which will make six more, you want to make cuts which will take six more people. We will not be able to complete the work in a timely manner. You think you can just hire more people later? This job takes a year or two to learn, which I, when I started, I didn't believe that either, but it is true. I would implore you to, to come and see for yourself. If you are defunding the clerk's office, which is the police support agency. Most of us already do not take breaks that we are entitled to. Some of us work through our lunch. I personally have brought in some supplies and paid for them out of my own pocket just to make it easier and more efficient to do my job. All the while, the court has given bonuses out to people who are doing yard maintenance during their normal work hours. I just recently after just recently after you decided to cut our budget, an employee on the court side received a $3,000 raise on April 5th, 2021. At the last council meeting, you were told that the clerk has laid off four people when in fact there were only two. The court had laid off four people. In fact, there was only two. One of the people that were laid off was in charge of the mental health court, which seems to be the bone of contention between two judges who are running at the same seat, politics, Please pull the city payroll and do your homework. Serve the people, not the political agenda, agenda of any individual. The clerk has the lowest budget while the court has the highest budget in the history of the court. Lisa Zeno Cranio, um, 576 Morningstar Talmage. I have recently heard that the Stoke City Council included a retroactive $200,000 budget cut to the clerk of court's office of the Stoke Municipal Court. Having been the clerk of that court and an employee of the court system for over 27 years, I find this to be the most irresponsible and dangerous act an elected official can make. The city of Stowe adopted the municipal court with the understanding of the functions of the clerk of court. Under Ohio revised code, you're required to fund the clerk of court's office. Cutting the staff of the court's office by almost half is dangerous and not only puts the public at great safety risk, it defies the codified ordinances of the state of Ohio. The clerk of court's responsibilities include FBI background checks, commitments to jail, preparing jail releases, arrest warrants, ter temporary protection orders for domestic violence victims, entering new traffic and criminal offenses, contacting jails for hearings, issuing certified mail, civil and service case, civil, civil and criminal cases, and many, many more duties required by law. Due to the Due to the pandemic, case loads in all courts were down in 2020. As of late, case loads are picking up throughout all courts, and the projection is to 
is a continued rise. Cutting the staff of the clerk of the clerk's office right as the workload is increasing will result result in massive backlogs in the clerk's in the clerk's office, right? Oh, let me see. And the clerks being the root cause of the offender not being held in jail or the victim's death at the hand of the abuser because there was backlogs in entering the protection order. At the end of the day, the burden would be on you for cutting critical positions in the clerk of court's office. For the sake of the constituents of the jurisdiction, I hope that you take personal responsibility and understand the clerk's functions. I urge you to put safety in your citizens first and rescind your vote to cut the clerk of court's budget. Susan Skafka, 3455 East Prescott Circle, Cock Falls. I am a civil clerk of Stowe Municipal Clerk. I ask that you read this out loud in its entirety. Please reconsider the budget cuts imposed to the clerk of court's office. You are using innocent clerks in a political game. We are single parents, single income households, disabled adults, adults caring for elderly parents. While this is true in most industries, other industries do not staff as, use their staff as pawns in election years. Amber's team has continued to excel amidst adversity and that is unacceptable to her opponents, both political and philosophical. The only way to make her and her team appear ineffective is to force the narrative that wouldn't otherwise be written. Our staff does an incredible job. We take time with callers, in-person filers. We have participated in training offered by the Ohio Supreme Court in an effort to be more effective and the best to serve the public. Under Andrew's leadership, we have produced materials to assist non-attorney filers showing that we truly care about their citizens. Reducing our staff by half will hurt the community. Some of you, some of you whom you represent <clears throat> more than anyone else. Filings will not be processed in a timely manner. There will be delays in returning money to creditors. We will have neither the time nor the staff need to provide proper assistance with filings in person or on the phone. This will not be due to the ineffective clerks. It will be because of the result of the unreasonable budget you have imposed. The clerk's office makes a positive difference in this community, and I want that to continue. If you cut us down by six staff members, we will not have the time or energy to give each person the service and attention he or she deserves. Our work will suffer, the community will suffer. Whether I'm in the courthouse as an employee or, or as a legate, I want to be the best <clears throat> possible product to leave the office. I implore you to let the let that happen. Katrina Dredick, 782 Covington Oval, Kent. I am horrified, horrified at the political gamemanship going on at the city of Stowe that affects not only the city but the entire court district. Well, revenues have may have been temporarily down due to the pandemic, the clerk is being asked to reduce her budget to a degree that is entirely unworkable. A few years ago, there were more than 20 full-time employees in the clerk's office. Between more efficient practices and attrition, there are now 13 full-time deputy clerks and a chief deputy. This is by far the smallest staff ever. The proposed budget cut will eliminate six full-time positions, nearly half the staff. These, duty, these deputy clerks are called upon multiple times per day to process critical documents that commit and release people from jail. They ensure that temporary protection orders are received by the correct law enforcement agencies. As one can imagine, if these things are not done timely and correctly due to lack of staffing, a felon may be out committing more crimes. A citizen who should be set free could be languished in jail waiting to be released that never comes. Or the police might not receive notice of a protection order leaving crime victims in danger and the city potentially liable. Similar effects will be felt at the civil division. Legants will not <clears throat> be able to file new case and, and leave with court date, but instead they will have to wait for documents to arrive in the mail. They may have to call back repeatedly to find anyone with the time to answer the phone call. One sick employee could potentially close down the entire department. 
there is a lot of chalk and stow about supporting our police officers. The clerk's office is one on the same level, a police support agency. The clerks create documents that police officers need to do their jobs. Again, the proposed budget will cut the staff by nearly half. Officers will be sitting around in the court waiting on paperwork instead of on the road or out in the community healing our residents. Why at a time when people are being vaccinated and businesses are reopening, does the city council think it makes sense to cut the clerk staff in half? Just as officers are issuing more citations and caseloads are increasing. The city of Stowe chose more than a decade ago to take on the responsibilities of the court for all the jurisdictions of the court district. Please do, do what is best, not only for the clerk's office and the people of Stowe, but for all the law enforcement agencies and citizens of the court district that depend on the clerk's office. Debbie Luchka, 2920 East Crestview Drive. I am commenting on council's decision to cut the clerk's budget by $200,000. I was appalled that a council member bragged about the decision on Facebook without explaining the repercussions. You are aware that approximately six jobs will be eliminated. Did you even try for the grants that are available for loss due to the pandemic? Totally wrong if you did not. Did you tell residents that having a backlog of important paperwork can cause serious repercussions? Paperwork such as jail arrest, protection orders, and arrest warrants delays put the citizens at risk. Chief Film clearly stated that there are that they are back on full patrols, so things will definitely improve, but council knows all and claims differently. Then, of course, it appears that you approve of the double dipping by Judge Hoover, receiving a pension, then coming back to work with full pay, or the fact that he gave court bonuses during the pandemic, or the fact that the clerk's office had already reduced her expenditures by 7% and, and cut staff by 2.5 employees. What exactly did the courts do last year but spend, 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 and you reward that behavior? Shame on this council for not taking the time to protect Stowe's residents and provide full transparency. Mayor Don Walters, 2310 Second Street, Cargo Falls. It has come to my attention that your recently passed annual operating budget contains a $200,000 reduction for the clerk of court staffing retroactive to January 1st, 2021. As previously explained by the clerk Zebertowski, the clerk's office is currently staffed at bare minimum levels to accomplish their required tasks. The office will actually need more people as the court's caseload increases this summer. As the mayor of a previous host city of the, to the court, I am fully aware of the importance of the role of the clerk's office in administering critical public safety duties, temporary protection orders or domestic violence, FBI background checks, commitments to jail, releases from jail, arrest warrants, certified records, or felony prosecutions, et cetera. There are just some of, these are just some of the tasks the clerk's office performs every day to keep residents safe, including the residents of Cauga Falls. Due to your drastic cut, these critical duties will suffer, putting the public at risk. Practically speaking, the only way to operate with reduced staffing is to further reduce the court caseload. As such, I am willing to retain driving under suspension cases in the Cuyahoga Falls Mayor's Court. Traffic caseloads are rising in Cuyahoga Falls, and we have adequate staffing to hear these additional cases. Not only would this alleviate your problem of the dangerous reduction in the clerk staffing, but defendants will pay substantially less in fees and fines. In addition, the citizens of Cuyahoga Falls will receive a new revenue stream from cases from the Stowe Court can no longer afford to process. I urge you to reconsider your dangerous cut to the clerk's office personnel. The safety of all citizens in Stowe Court District depends on it. Monica Robinson, 4035 Red Wing Trail, Stowe. I am writing this letter to express my disgust over the partisan politics this council is taking part in. When you were voted into office, you were to give your best to all the residents of Stowe. Instead, you are playing political games and it is incredibly disturbing to say the least. While I understand that there is potential of cuts needing to be made because of how the pandemic has affected our city, we have grants specifically given to mitigate loss due to the pandemic. Is, this, is that being used? And if so, how? 
to take COVID relief and not use it to mitigate COVID losses and is inexcusable and unethical. Chief Film specifically stated at a previous council meeting that the police department is back in full operation and he expects to see an increase in traffic related caseload. Mr. McIntyre, I would like to know why you stated that there was no proof of the expectation to return to normal. Do you know better than the police chief? This is a direct attack on Amber Zibertowski, and if we and we all know why. Mike Razor has already begun saying how behind the clerk is with processing documents, which is an outright lie. This will likely happen if she is forced to let go of some of her uh, staff members. Do you know who will really be at risk if this happens? It will be the victims of domestic violence. Are you okay with that? Also, Judge Hoover has been double dipping and gave out bonuses at the end of 2020 and not once did I hear you shame for or discipline him for being irresponsible. We only need to look at council members that Mike Razor supported who are sitting on this council to know the reason behind all this. The partisan games need to stop. As this is an election year, you can, you can count on people being much more mindful of your conduct. Mike Razor has lost two elections already and he should have should prove to you that backing him may not be the smartest idea. Please do better. Carrie Suhodolnik, 4263 Meadowlark Trail. I was disappointed to see that the clerk of court's budget was cut by 200K with limited discussion. This will translate into job loss in caseload delay. The traffic caseload was severely impacted by COVID, but the chief film specifically stated that they are back up and running at full capacity. I believe we should put more faith into the people running the police department and courthouse. Also, the city has received COVID grants that should be used to make up deficits caused by the pandemic. I support fiscal responsibility, but I also believe that we should prop properly utilize our resources before making cuts that could cause safety issues. If the clerk's department is cut by 50%, what will happen to criminal processing? Are you putting a budget line item over the actual safety of li livelihood of our community? Do you think the community would really laud improvements to Silver Springs while laying people, people off and causing delays in court processing? What if a domestic violence victim needs an order of protection entered into law enforcement databases and that is delayed? This is dangerous and unnecessary. If you need to find money, perhaps ask Judge Hoover to give up part of his double dipping six figure salary retirement that he collects on the taxpayer's dime or pull back the 10K bonuses he gave out in 2020. I don't often hear the finance committee asking about that wasteful spending. I ask you today to rescind the budget cut and work with the administration to fund the courthouse properly. Amber Zibertowski, Clerk of Courts, 2203 Crockett Circle. I am writing you tonight to ask the council to reconsider its recent discussion to fund the clerk's office. As you know, I already made a financial case for approving my requested budget at the March 25th Finance Committee meeting. Despite my proactive cuts and continued fiscal responsibility before and throughout this pandemic, council decided to slash my budget and only my budget without the discussion on March 31st. Your unfounded and retroactive cut of $200,000 will force me to immediately lay off six of my 14 employees or face a total office shutdown by October 1st. As of March 31st, our monthly case count shows that workloads are rapidly increasing with 251 more cases filed this month than in March 2020. Imposing massive staff cuts right now is not only unwise, it's downright dangerous and seriously compromised public safety. With half of my staff defunded and gone, we simply will not be able to process critical court documents in a timely manner. That means temporary protection orders will be backlogged, putting domestic violence victims at risk. It means police officers will spend more time waiting in line for warrants and less time on the road protecting our citizens. It means FBI <clears throat> background checks for firearm, firearm purchases will slow to a crawl. And if I choose to keep these services at your current levels, your current means all of these vital services will cease to exist as of October 1st. 
I do not want this for the front for the 200,000 residents I serve and neither should you. As the host city to the court, you have a legal duty to adequately fund the clerk's office. I respectfully ask that you please do your job and amend the operating ordinance for our office back to its original amount. Your failure to do so in a timely manner violates the Ohio law and puts the safety of the entire court district at risk. Mayor David Klein, City of Talmadge, 46 North Avenue, Talmadge. My law department and I have been anxious to see the courts resume operating on full scale basis as the COVID threat subsides. Now I'm told that you plan to reduce the operating budget of the clerk's office by $200,000 retroactive to January 1st, 2021. How can the clerk's office be expected to take on more cases with a cut of this nature requiring that she have less staff? My community deserves to have the clerk's office performing at, at or above the same level they were operating at or before the pandemic. They have been operating with a minimal staff as it is, so I am skeptical as to why you would cut their staffing budget now when they have a greater backlog of cases more than ever. From temporary protection orders or domestic violence, arrest warrants, commitments to and releases from jail, clerk's office is critical to helping our residents stay safe. For my city and all, my, all the others in your court district, I ask that you reconsider the budget and cut in the clerk's office. Mayor Bernie Hoovey, Village of Silver Lake. <clears throat> it has come to my attention that you, your recently passed annual operating budget contains a $200,000 reduction for the clerk of court staffing, retroactive to January 1st, 2021. As previously explained by Clerk Zibertowski, the clerk's office is currently staffed at bare minimum levels to accomplish their required tasks. The office will actually need more people as the court caseload increases this summer. As mayor, I am fully aware of the importance role of the clerk's office in administering critical public safety duties to ensure the safety of my residents. Temporary protection orders for domestic violence, FBI background checks, commitments to jail, releases from jail, arrest warrants, certified records for felony prosecutions, etc. These are just some of the tasks the clerk's office performs every day to keep our residents safe. With cuts as drastic as those approved by Stoke City Council, these critical duties will suffer, putting the public at risk. I urge you to reconsider these unwarranted, even dangerous cuts to the clerk's office personnel. The safety of our citizens in Stowe Court District depends on it. Jennifer Kinnick, 3779 Mahoning Road. I am a deputy clerk and I have worked at Stowe's clerk office for over five years. The pandemic has made a very big impact on all. There is no denying that. However, with the current decrease in the number of employees in our office, it is already a struggle to keep up with the all the day daily work that the ultimately, ultimately keeps our public safe. Council has determined to defund the clerk of court's budget by $200,000, which means cutting our staff almost in half from what it is now. Each clerk has many daily tasks, but I am only bringing two of mine to your attention today as they are crucial to public safety. The first task pertains to FBI and ICS background checks for prospective firearm, firearm buyers. The FBI sends these requests to our office to verify court documents and information. At this time, we perform our own check on the individual pull case files from various locations and search throughout various formats. Once obtained, information has to be scanned, redacted and returned to the NCIS so that they can in turn can respond to the firearm seller within four days. Fail failure to complete this in a timely manner will inhibit NICS from notifying the firearm seller that the buyer is ineligible to purchase. This will allow individuals with criminal backgrounds to purchase a firearm that would normally be prohibited. Having our staff make timely compliance with these requests nearly impossible. The second task pertains to BCI and I forms. These forms are sent to us for various reasons daily on by local law enforcement agencies. 
These cards provide fingerprints and ITN numbers to identify each individual. We are responsible for ensuring that the portable offenses are, are timely and entered into court view and trans transmitted to BCI and I. Only at that point is BCI and I able to update and finalize the defendant's criminal history. Delays in this process from staffing cuts will directly impede police officer safety as they will not have vital criminal history information on hand when approaching a crime scene. Our local law enforcement agencies depend on this to provide the, up, the most up-to-date and accurate information. If we fail, they will fail. Please reconsider your vote, if not for our sake, for the sake of the police officers and the public we serve. Jennifer Coleman, 155 Mech Drive, Apartment 9. This letter is for Councilwoman Christina Shaw. You are one of our council at large council persons. You represent all citizens of Stowe. However, you have blocked several of your constituents on social media. This is not appreciated, appreciated, nor is it ethical. If you are going to comment on social media, especially with local Stowe community pages or on other Stowe government official pages, Please do not use your personal social media page to do so. Once you do that, your personal page becomes public and therefore ethically you should no longer block any of your constituents. You are an elected government official and should be committing to the capacity of your local pages. Either use your official government page to comment on social media or, or unblock every Stoke citizen on your personal social media pages. We have a right to see what you are posting online and have the ability to respond to it if necessary. The blocking of Stowe residents on social media shows your lack of ability to be able to listen to others' opinions and thoughts that you disagree with. And to be honest, it is quite immature. This will be remembered during election time this November. As to the additional paid parental leave legislation, you will be represent re pre presenting at the end of the month, we are in the midst of an ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and you are proposing another paid parental paid leave on top of the already generous sick and vacation time the city of Stowe gives its, in its benefit package. This is not the time to propose this because it is not fiscally sound. I agree with Nick Wren and Councilwoman Cindy Harrison. This proposal should be coming from the Stowe administration to you not the other way around. When an employee takes a job, the benefits package is part of the new hire. If a person doesn't like it, they can go work elsewhere. There's already a mechanism in place to give parental leave, FMLA. Benefits such as maternity, maternity leave should never be legislated. It should be up to the each individual employer. That's all I have, Cindy. Thank you, Ms. Fellers. I appreciate you reading those this evening. We'll move on to our next business item, unless there are any comments. Seeing none, we'll move on to city officials report. Mayor Pravonik. Thank you, President Harrison. Um, I just wanna make a couple comments. I know those were a lot of letters, but as the mayor of the host city of the Stone Municipal Court, I need to express my concern for the recent action that Stowe City Council has taken to reduce the clerk's court's budget in an amount of $200,000. This has nothing to do with politics. As a previous person in the business sector, I look at everything as a balance. Balance is everything in life. In my position as mayor of our city, I'm keenly aware of the vitally important work the clerk's office undertakes every day to serve our communities. Many of you have also pointed this out. This reduction of 200,000 in the clerk of court's budget is a cause of great concern. It is a cause for concern for the safety of the residents of the city of Stowe and every other jurisdiction that the court serves in Summit County. That is really the bottom line, is safety of people. Clerk of Court Zibertowski pointed out in her budget presentation to Stowe City Council at the last council finance meeting that those reductions were made in real time at the height of the pandemic. She made tough decisions at the beginning of the pandemic, not waiting until the 11th hour to make hard choices. Included in her report to council was a wage comparison table that showed that clerk's office staff wages for 2021 
are projected to be the lowest they've been since 2011. You would be hard pressed to find any governmental agency that could boast such a reduction in staffing costs since 2011, let alone one that functions at the highly professional and highly efficient level of our clerk of court's office. The reduction of 200,000 in the clerk's budget affects public safety as I stated earlier. It means temporary protection orders for victims of domestic violence will sit for days. Instead of minutes, they are uh, processed and entered into the law enforcement data database. Failing to protect the victims from their abusers right when they are most in need of protection. Arrest warrants will pile up before they are approved and entered into the system, giving criminals the opportunity to flee or offend again. FBI background checks for processing times will grow, giving violent criminals extra time to purchase firearms. These are real safety risk to real, to real people. But I think this is the biggest part that I want to bring across. These cuts and I have spoken to many, many mayors. I did not reach out, they have reached out to me around of our surrounding communities. These cuts are sending a message to the other jurisdictions served by the court and is not good one. It is evidenced by the letters we heard this evening. My concern lies though, cities without mayor's court like Talmadge will be looking into opening mayor's courts and cities with mayor's courts like Cog Falls will be encouraged to divert more cases from the Stowe Municipal Court. And if other cities open up mayor's courts, they, I guarantee you, will not return in the future, leaving us with an even greater deficit to fund annually. Many people have asked me about why did you not veto the budget? The budget is very important to Stowe. The safety of residents is very important to Stowe. If I would have vetoed this budget, it would have put even our law enforcement and firefighters on, on the streets and we would not have protection. That's not a scare tactic, that's what would have happened. So as the mayor of the city of Stowe, I urge Stowe City Council to reconsider this massive cut to a law enforcement support agency. The work of clerk of court's office performs as vital to every single police department in this jurisdiction as well to the court itself. For these reasons, I formally seek Stowe City Council to reconsider the action that have been taken to reduce, to reduce the clerk of court's budget by the $200,000. Again, thank you very much for your time uh, and I appreciate your concern. Thank you. That is all for this evening, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor Pravonik. Mr. Heiler, you have a question? Yes, uh, I have several questions. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Probonik, uh, sure. I want to engage with the dialogue with you. First of all, I abstained at the last meeting uh, because I thought that was the right thing to do. Um, in fact, I know it was the right thing to do. And if you're conflicted, you you have to step back. Or if you think you're conf you, you, if you think you've got a conflict, you've got a conflict. So um, since that time, uh, Mrs. Zerbitowski has removed the deposit from the institution where I have stock, um, and so uh, she's she's it's giving me that in writing. So I accept that as, as on its face. I did check with the ethics commission. I made a call to them uh, and I have no conflict at this time. So now I, uh, and I guess I want to make sure that that was on the record uh, so that nobody thought that I'd be an influence one way or the other. So um, it's, it is what it is. Um, first of all, you mentioned you didn't beat with the budget, which I, which absolutely is the right decision. Um, we only had four hours between the vote uh, last Thursday night and the deadline for the budget. I think this is a perfect opportunity tonight, first of all, to make a commitment that uh, we'll have that budget done in October this year and uh, and move forward. And I know it's not what you're used to, I know what you're, but when you're up against the wire um, and you have any kind of questions, you, you have to move and you have to make those decisions. So I think, uh, to be honest with you, had the administration uh, been prepared, had everybody been prepared, um, in getting the budget ready a lot earlier. Um, maybe we're not having this discussion. I, I would like to know, Mayor, um, what your opinion is of the Falls Court. I thought it was um, interesting that we got a letter from uh, Mayor Walter. You know, I, as I look at the business model of Stowe Municipal Court, um, and, and by the way, I think everybody at the court's done a great job. So let's just, let's just get that out there. I, 
I don't have a problem with uh, with what's going. I, I you know what's going on inside the court is inside baseball to me, and so I presume that uh, that this will get resolved somehow. But anyway, getting back to the subject at hand, um, uh, Mayor Walters um, can help us can help that court by uh, directing more business from the uh, Cuyahoga Falls uh, uh, Mayor's Court to the um, to the Stowe Municipal Court. As a matter of fact. I learned in my research, and again, I, I, I spent the last three days trying to investigate, find what I'm talking about, and I've realized I've only scratched the surface. But the court originally, and you can correct me because you were on the, you were on the, I think, the council at the time, and Jim Costello was on the council at the time. But my understanding is, is that the um, Cuyahoga Falls Court was not ADA compliant and actually had security ratings and things of that nature that were very negative with regards to the state of Ohio. Um, that there really wasn't an interest in Cuyahoga Falls at that time to, uh, to have a court of, uh, uh, to, to anything to it. So uh, I think with uh, Senator Kevin Coughlin and with, um, uh, and with uh, Judge Hoover and with the, Stowe, with the city of Stowe that you brought that court uh, to, um, to Stowe. And I guess um, my question to you and the hard question for you, my friend, is um, how do you feel about the mayor's court at, uh, at Falls and do you feel that they should merge in or, or direct more business to the, uh, the municipal court of Stowe so that uh, we don't have uh, some of the shortfalls that we're having? And I will say this too, in my research, I understand the comments that have made, I appreciate them and all that stuff, but the reality is, is that, uh, and, and, and the finance people can correct me if I'm wrong, but the reality that I've understood is that the municipal court of Stowe has not cost the taxpayers of Stowe really any money per se. Is, is that correct? Like, in other words, uh, Judge Hoover covers his costs every year, including this last year during the current pandemic. And I think he has some special funds that he can go to and, and some other things. So is that right or, or wrong? Okay, uh, I will answer the first part um, as far as that's concerned. And uh, very good points, Mr. Heiler. Um, first of all, no, I was not on city council at that point in time when this decision was made. Okay. Like I told many people before, even when I ran, and you know, right or wrong, it doesn't matter, okay? Whether they moved here or they didn't, okay? Like I used to tell people, the building is built, we move on from that point and we make the best of it, okay? We cannot put the building on wheels and move it to some other city, and we have to go ahead and work within the confines that we work with. That being said, going back to your question, of what I love to see Cauga Falls be part of this court? Yes, definitely. I would be a fool not to say that, okay? But I will go back to my one statement. We need to work through that. But my concern is of this evening, when I hear from other mayors throughout this week, calling me, not me calling them, and telling me that they can run a mayor's court and make more money for their city, what stops them once they make this commitment to go ahead and ever come back to us? Because just like myself, I have to answer to the residents of why I would pay more for this court. Uh, again, yes, they're gonna use the court for other purposes, but my concern right now is how this would pivot and will we lose more revenue by doing this. And again, I cannot control other mayors, other consuls, or anything like that. So I think I answered both. Um, I don't know if you want answers from Mr. Costello and Mr. Rowe, but that's where that's at. No, I, I think what I'm, I'll get to that, but what I'm looking for though, is a commitment from, from you. And quite frankly, uh, from, you know, those mayors that are writing letters, I think a lot of those letters uh, should be written to you know, Mayor Walters. Um, I think that uh, I think the answer is in is in that, and I think that um, moving forward, I mean, we keep you know, this isn't a new problem. I mean, it's, and I'm talking about the global issue of the court. We've been talking about the revenues, and to be honest with you, um, when I listened to the presentation and I asked the question of uh, uh, Judge Hoover, anybody can go back to YouTube and see it, but I asked him, "Is this a sustainable business model?" Because that's what I'm looking at is is what um, uh, you know, and, and what I heard was we need more people to do bad things 
And then we need the police to be out there to catch them and then bring them in at a time when jails are rejecting people, at least what I've discovered over the last, you know, over the last three days that I've talked to people. Again, I've only scratched the surface uh, and I'm only going to go so deep. But the bottom line is, though, is that there are about there, there are lots of there are lots of challenges here, I think, for the court. And I think in the administration, no matter who's in charge of the court. And I think that uh, if we're going to host the court, we should host and we should be uh, and not have to not have to scrap. And, and like, for example, um, the, the Stoke, the Stoke clerk, um, you, the other mayors, um, I think you're the answers with you folks. I mean, council's going to come and go, whatever the case may be. But in the end of the day, the answer really lies with the people who are doing it every single day. Um, and so we, we need it. We need to take a look at the business model and the sources of of revenue and whether people like Judge Hoover or don't like Judge Hoover, he's put in some, at least from what I've seen, he's put some programs in that so that this hasn't cost us taxpayers anything at Stowe. I mean, it, and again, Jim Costello or John, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I met with you guys this week, and and it, it has the court in in your uh, you know in your purview and your and Jim in your time uh, has has this court cost us any money at Stowe? Real quick, if I could insert Jim, real quick. Uh, we'll go back to, and that was even brought up by Judge Hoover. Uh, this is not in my arena, unfortunately. This is in the state arena. So state officials make that determination if they do not want mayor's courts. My concern is going back to these other mayors, but now it's even compounding a problem. Right now, it's not going to expedite or help a problem with Cog Falls, they're saying they'll take more cases out of our court than what we have right now, based upon what they're looking at. I cannot control Cog Falls. I cannot do that. But again, that is above, that's at state level. Even Judge Hoover said that. So as long as that law remains in effect, that's, that's the law we have to abide by. So like I said, that doesn't mean there isn't discussion, but that's the case there. So, Mr. Costello, Mr. Earl, I, I don't know what just, you want to add to that. And just in response to that, Mayor, what I would rather have are, 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 uh, are the mayor sitting down and talking about that, you know, and avoiding going to the state and things in, in, in that route. I would rather have us talking about what's at the best interest of all concerned, much like what I just heard in those letters, which, which, I, think are, which I think are good points. Jim? The court has covered its operational costs pretty much since its inception. The mortgage or the bond, it's always been a two thirds by the court and one third by the city. So in the long short answer is the court has not cost the taxpayers any additional money. John, am I correct? Well, uh, in general, this, the financial arrangements and the financial operations of the court and the debt have been a successful enterprise for everybody concerned. Have there been costs? Yes. They were, the, the operating cost has been covered, uh, the deficit by the court since 2011. The first couple of years, 2009 and 10, there was some, as we were sorting out how to operate and how to budget for the court, there were some uh, uh, operating costs that the city had to cover in those years, but since 2011, we have never, we have not billed the other communities for anything because the operating deficit has been covered. And as uh, Jim said, regarding the uh, uh, the debt and the cost of the construction, the average since day one, the debt was first taken out in 2007 as we were building the court. We took it out a couple of uh, years before uh, the construction took place so that we could finance the construction. But the court has paid two thirds of the debt service and the city has paid one third. And as Judge Hoover has said, the, the pace of debt retirement is on an accelerated basis and we are ahead of schedule on that. But one thing to remember, the city is paying part of the debt, but we do own the land and buildings. So it's, it's ownership of assets uh, by the city. And, and in general, the, the uh, not just in general, specifically, the, the operation and the financial outcome as intended when the court came to Stowe, 
has been very satisfactory and is successful for all parties concerned, the court and the city of Stowe as the host city. And I might add for the other 15 participating communities have benefited from it. The uh, general has, um, has previous councils, have they ever cut, um, have they ever reduced the, uh, the ask or has, you know, in the clerk or the, uh, or the mayor's offices have, uh, you know, in the requests that they've had for their budget, has the city of Stowe ever in the past asked for reductions or enforced reductions or anything of that nature? In other words, what's, what's, our, what's our previous uh, history? You're talking about at the administrative level or the council level? Uh, at the, the council level. Council level, there were several uh, reductions in the clerk's budget. When the appropriation submitted, there was an amendment. Uh, two years, possibly three, uh, there were uh, reductions in the appropriation for the uh, clerk's budget as submitted to council. And at that time, how did they arrive at those? If you can remember, how did they arrive at, at doing those reductions? Uh, I have, I don't have any specific okay. comments on that. Jim, do you have any, do you have any, yeah. Are no, you part I, of any I of those councils? I don't remember what rationale they used. I do know that uh, at one of the reductions, uh, I believe Diane came back mid-year and showed us where she needed additional money and additional money was approved. But okay, so there, any there, rationale that they I, used. Just, I just want to make sure that I understand there was a history of, of reductions though in the past at, at council, so. And, and I can tell you the reductions were not of this magnitude. Okay, that's fine. Um, really, I, I, John, I really appreciate you, you answering the questions and I uh, appreciate council giving me the time. I, uh, I will say again, I think the court, I think on its record, on its face, regardless of who has been there, I think the court's been well managed. Um, I, I do think though that the numbers are down and uh, we assume they're gonna come back. Um, but I think we've got some, I think we've got some market factors that may prevent that from happening, uh, happening with any kind of speed. Um, this really is what we're operating on right now, my friends, is an eight and a half month budget, really eight, where it's really eight months and 22 days. Um, and I'm just speaking for myself, to be honest with you, um, I really don't wanna have this fight. I, 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 I think that I heard, um, I heard the clerk of court Zerbitowski uh, say that she would, uh, in her presentation, that she wanted to protect her staff. And she had this other person out there that she wouldn't hire until the numbers get up to a certain point. And, um, and so I think, I think if we could define, put some parameters about what those other numbers are, I think we should put this behind us. But I think there's something else. And I think it's, and I think it's the larger issue in this. And I, and I don't think we can lose sight of what we're looking at. Um, and that is that uh, we have to look at the model. And part of that model includes, and part of the success of this court, includes Cuyahoga Falls coming in. And the other part of this, and the other part that's unspoken here, uh, I guess I brought it up, but the other part that we have to take a look at, and that's the process by with, which we do our city budget. I think there's a lot of things could be, could, could be, uh, could be changed. Now, I'm one voice in council. I defer the rest of the council members. And as always, um, the majority rules. And so I respect my fellow council members and, uh, and I do not share the belief that, uh, that, that my fellow council members are, are politically motivated in, in their decision. I, I just, I just, I, I reject that. I really do. I think that, uh, they're looking at numbers, they're looking at a business decision and, uh, that's what I'm looking at. And, uh, and I think that there are other and more amicable avenues, I think over the next and if we if we do something about fixing this either tonight or two weeks from now, that um, because budgets can always be changed. I've heard that at least a hundred times since I've been on council. Um, you know, but this this could be handled with you know just some calm, nice, rational, uh, keeping our composure and having a discussion. But with the idea being that we are going to, and the mission being that we're going to make sure that this court uh, is, is always going to run in a very, uh, very professional fashion. And I am not making a political statement here. I just look, I'm just looking at the numbers and the numbers show me that the, if the court has not been a burden on us, somebody's doing a good job. And I, whomever that's been and whomever's been there. So thank you very much. Madam President, thank you very much for the time.
You're welcome, Mr. Heiler. Mr. McIntyre, you had your hand raised. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I just have one comment and one question for the mayor. Uh, what my comment is, you know, I couldn't uh, agree and echo Mr. Heiler's sentiments more about the budget process as I heard a lot of uh, comments uh, in these uh, red, or these red statements today uh, that retroactively takes it back to the first. Uh, the reason it was retroactive is because that's based off of when the administration presents the budget to this council. So I completely wholeheartedly agree with uh, Councilman Heiler on passing and working together to pass this budget before the end of the year. Uh, there's a lot more things that can stem from that process too. Uh, I just wanna be on the record here too. We look at it as we're already in April, close to mid April already. If we were to approve this budget before the end of this year, the road program uh, is a good example, could go out to bid in January uh, and we could ultimately potentially see the road program completed in the year in which it was bid. And instead of some cases, uh, history has shown that that program usually carries over to the following year. Last year was an anomaly. Uh, you know, the, the administration worked hard to, to give us a supplemented road program. And for that, I'm thankful. And as well as the taxpayers are thankful for that. My question is, is related to some statements that were made uh, about this council regarding Judge Hoover and the fact that he's double dipping. Uh, Mayor Probonik, my question is, how many members of your administration are, double are currently considered double dippers? You're muted. Uh, Mr. Earl, you'd have to answer that or Mr. Costello, I, I, I'm not sure. Mr. Earl, when did you retire from the city of Stowe? Okay, so you're going to make this personal about me now, is that correct? No, Mr. I'm just Mr. asking a question. We were told, we, we were asked I didn't in the make comments. Those statements. Someone else did. I didn't make them. And I'm just asking, the mayor couldn't answer the question, so he directed me to you. I'm just asking the question. There are double dippers amongst this administration, yet this council is being told that we're not out there against Judge Hoover for him double dipping. The reality of it is Judge Hoover is an elected official. So that's all I had is the question was, is if we're going to be asked about why we're not out there touting about double dippers when there are double dippers within this administration. Thank you. I, I believe, though, that nobody in this administration, including myself, that just made the written statement that I ever said anything about Judge Hoover double dipping or anything else. Those are letters written by the public. That was not in my letter or anything along that way. And anybody's feel free to look back at those statements. The other thing is too, um, I will go ahead and address the roads. I believe, and I'll throw this back to Mr. Wren. Yes, it was an anomaly last year, but for what we do in the road program over the years that you have managed at, you and Mr. Anderson, you have always tried to put that road program all the way to the very end. A lot of it had to do with weather or whatever, but at no point in time trying to circumvent or lessen a road program. So I don't know, Mr. Wren, if you have any other further details. Uh, no, nothing to add really. I mean, obviously we do what we can uh, to get as much done as we possibly can. That would be my only comment. And just one I appreciate more thing. That, Mr. The comment was really is because the timing in which it goes out to bid is what forces it to typically carry over in the other year, not the fact that the administration is it not administering a road program. We get a we get a robust road program every year. So I want to be clear that it's the time in which it goes out to bid and not the, how the administration handles the road program that pushes it off to the next year. Thank you. So one other thing, if I could address Mr. Heiler and, and, and Mr. McIntyre, um, Mr. Costello or Mr. Earl, can you explain how this has gone with the budget process as we've moved along? Um, not only this year, but in previous years, what you have to do to close books and things like that, if you could just address that. Uh, like I said, I don't want to speak out of turn in what my position is. You're talking about the budget calendar? Yes, sir. Well, it's you've got one of two choices. You if you pass a budget in the current year, which would be passing the 2022 budget in 21, you're then working off of estimated numbers for 2021 because it isn't closed yet and 22. By having the budget process take place in the first part of the year, then you do have final numbers to use to base any future budgets off of any estimates for the future. You're only working with one estimated year rather than two. Uh, that's one of the one of the advantages of 
of having a temporary budget and then doing the full year budget uh, after the commencement of the of the uh, current budget year. Yeah, how but long? We've done is it that... both ways. We've done it both ways in in uh, the city of Stowe, and it can be done either way. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Heiler. Thank you very much. Um, I think all of you know that I have a deep affection for all of you, everybody on this, everybody that I can see, and I'm sure some of the people that are watching. Uh, and I want nothing but success for our community. And uh, and I and I think that this, I I really think that if we work with expanding the market in a positive way and the revenue streams for the Stone Municipal Court. We have communication, collaboration, which uh, uh, the mayor often asks for, and unfortunately shut his screen off. Um, but I think that uh, I, I think that's the answer. And uh, and to be honest with you, I I, uh, I see tonight quite frankly positive. And I also think that we got a warning sign too as a as a council, and that is in future councils, and that we can't let this budget go to the last minute. You know, it's it's we we can't we. It, it's just not good business. And so um, I didn't get to do that when I, when I was working. So let's see what we can do about, you know, getting that budget in early, getting those, getting the uh, capital items, uh, you know, in earlier. And as I think you heard from Mr. McIntyre, uh, our chairman on finance, you know, we might have better prices in, in the winter time or, or better, better uh, budgeting opportunities and, and kind of go from there. And, and I, Apologize to my other six council members if I put you on the spot uh, in any way, shape, or form. That's not my intention, but uh, but if we were to vote for um, to put the two hundred thousand dollars back with the proviso that um, uh, that the clerk would uh, would, would keep uh, that one employee in advance until and have her tell us at what point that would be be triggered. I personally would be fine with that, and and, and I I could support that. And um, uh, but I but also with the with the just tacit understanding that as we move forward, that um, there's communication to figure out what the numbers are doing. And, and I would suggest to everybody in the court and even in the city that we do as much cross training as possible because uh, who knows what the future holds for us. So uh, budget wise or anything else. And so uh, much like successful sports franchises, um, like the New England Patriots, they have one of their secrets to winning all the Super Bowls was lots of people could do lots of things. Somebody might be a might be a wide receiver one day and be the quarterback the next day. And so, uh, and I think, and, and I'm sure Chief Stone, you've got examples like that with the, with the Packers. So um, I'll just kind of go, I'll, I'll let it go. There you go. But anyway, but let's, uh, let's keep it positive. And, and I appreciate the hard discussion and, and thank you for allowing me to share my views. Thank you, Mr. Heiler, Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Madam President. Just a quick, and I, I know we're, discussions long here, but um, just to remain focused on um, progress and problem solving and things uh, uh, and to talk, to think back about rescue plan dollars, CARES Act dollars, those should be supplementing pandemic issues. And to me, the court issues were a pandemic issue, right? So I'm not sure why we wouldn't use those dollars to get and I remember a $500,000 number that Judge Hoover brought up initially, and we keep people employed, certainly not in favor of anybody losing their job. But I think when you look at what those dollars are for, I think this would be what they're for. So I'm in favor of uh, not interested in uh, politically charged doc, you know, um, dialogue. I'm more interested in how do we solve the problem? How do we make progress? And to me, I think the solution is... Um, uh, rescue plan, CARES Act, those dollars. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. And I will say, Mr. Heiler, I do echo your sentiment that I would much rather be doing the budget at the end of the year. I understand that we're making some projections because the books aren't closed yet. But I think that's very common for a lot of, a lot of businesses. A lot of other cities operate under that model. And sometimes you have to take those chances. And, and as we always have heard, heard, like Mr. Heiler said again and again, budgets can be amended, things can be changed. So as we process through these things, we can make the changes when we need to, but I think doing it earlier makes these things much easier to not be 
down to the last month and down to the last day to just make sure we have all the information about the budget and then be making retroactive changes. So I would prefer that we do it before the end of this year, before next year. So I would challenge the administration to see what we could do to make that happen. Um, we will move on now to the finance director's report, Mr. Costello. I really have nothing else to report other than the fact that uh, Yes, there's money coming with the American Rescue Plan, but Treasury has not given any guidance. So until we get guidance, we don't know how we can use that money. Thank you, Mr. Costello. I was going to ask you that question because I have not seen any guidance or seen anybody that has commented how that can be used. Um, Mr. Feldman, I think you're right. That's something we have to consider when it comes in, but it all depends on what the guidelines are around that. Director of Budget and Management, Mr. Earl. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just for the record, the question was asked. I retired in 2008 and returned on contract to the city, and I remain on contract with the city of Stowe at this time. As far as anybody else who's retired, drawing pensions, contract, I don't have any comment on any other person, just myself. I will be glad to state my status. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Earl. And, and I don't think that was intentional towards you. I do think um, that there are a lot of people that are have brought that up as an issue. And I, I don't think it has anything to do with the issue at hand or with the clerk's office or with our budget whatsoever. Um, so I, I don't think it's a relevant issue to the situation. But I do know that we have people in our city that are in the same situation and have retired and come back. And it's often because they're good resources to our city. And that's why we've had them come back. Sometimes it's the right decision to make. And um, in Judge Huber's situation, that was made by the voters. None of us had any say in that other than our own personal vote at the ballot box. Um, thank you, Mr. Earl. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Earl? Yes. Mr. Heiler. Thank you. John, I love working with you. Thank you. I really do. I, I, it's, a, it's an honor. Thank you. I love government work. I, I think I'm good at it and I, uh, I love, love doing it. I agree with you. Thank you, Mr. Heiler, Mr. Earl. We will move on to the law director's report, Ms. Six. I also enjoy working with Mr. Earl. He's an excellent <laughs> asset. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Um, Everybody isn't gonna say that, are they? <laughs> no, 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 we're done, we're done. Um, I don't have anything to report. I would ask for council support in uh, the hiring of the assistant prosecutor though. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Six. Any questions for Ms. Six this evening? Seeing none, we will move on. Chief of Staff Service Directors report. Mr. Wren, welcome back. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Harrison. I uh, have no report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Wren this evening? Seeing none, we will move on. City Engineers report, Mr. McCleary. Thank you, Madam President. I do not have any report. Happy to answer any questions. Mr. Feldman, you moved boxes. I want to, un <laughs> I want to unmute myself and I muted you. I apologize because you jumped to the front when you raised your hand. So Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Madam President. I apologize for hitting the number. <laughs> Mr. McCleary, real quick, I just jotted down a little something. I read an Akron Beacon Journal article about um, ODOT projects and how many things they're doing. And uh, Councilman McIntyre may have some comments too. How is Monroe Falls getting North River Road paved from Darrow up to the Stowe line? That's the first part of the question. And second would be, not knowing, and I have to look a little farther at our road program, that can we maybe time up the same time we can do North River Road as ODOT looks like they're going to do North River Road up to the Stowe Line? Just if you can kind of enlighten me a little bit and provide a little bit of insight. Okay. Um, Monroe Falls has uh, applied for an AMATS grant called STBG resurfacing funding. And they were awarded that several years ago, maybe in 2018, 19. Um, and they are finishing up the project so that they can bid it out this year. And 
our North River Road was previously paved in the last, and Mr. Wren could probably tell us, but it, probably in the last three or four years. So it wouldn't have been eligible based on the uh, pavement rating on, on you know, the con condition of the pavement. So there's a lot of criteria that goes into uh, picking uh, grants for, for resurfacing projects. So we have applied in the past, we, we were able to get a grant to do Graham Road, which was just two years ago or three years ago. And then we were uh, jointly with Silver Lake. So Silver Lake portion and Stowe. So it is a good idea to do both of them at the same time, but our North River Road was in a condition that had to be done uh, earlier than wait with Monroe Falls. Thank Does you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you, Mr. McCleary. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Any other questions for Mr. McCleary? Seeing none, um, we'll move on to our police chief's report. Chief Film. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I do not have a report. However, I would like to make council aware that um, starting on the 11th, which is Sunday, it's National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. Every year during the second week of April, the telecommunications uh, personnel in the public safety community are honored. It's a week that's set aside so everyone can be made aware of their hard work and dedication. I wanna thank all of our dispatchers for the great job that they do day in and day out. We recognize it's a very tough, stressful job and we appreciate all they do. I would encourage all of our city leaders here assembled today, um, starting Sunday and through the rest of the next week to at least take a few minutes out of your time and also our, our public um, to make a phone call to our dispatch center and just tell them how much you appreciate the work that they do. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief Film. Thank you for sharing that with us. Any questions for Chief Film this evening? Seeing none, we will move on to the fire chief's report, Chief Stone. Thank you, Madam President. I do not have anything to report. I did want to uh, thank uh, the engineering department for the work they're going to be doing that they propose to do behind Walmart and Acorn Place as we know it in the fire service. That is an area that we have uh, had a lot of concern for, have an inadequate fire protection. There are 34 homes there that, we, uh, that do not meet the standard that we've been trying to attain with our ISO rating. So we're very appreciative of uh, Jerry Dolston and uh, Jim McCleary and all the work they're doing over there. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And we do also like John Earl too. I just want to point that out. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Stone. Any almost, questions for Chief Stone? I'm going to sign off now. <laughs> question. Seeing no question. Oh, sorry, Mr. McIntyre. I just want to echo that I support Mr. Earl as well. Okay. If I didn't, I wouldn't have voted yes for his contract when it came up for renewal. Okay. I just want to be clear that I don't not support you, Mr. Earl. You've done a lot of things for this uh, community and for this city and our finances of the city are better for you being here. So I want to echo that sentiment. It wasn't a personal jab at you. It was a simple direct question that was asked of the, the administration. Uh, unfortunately, you were the one right above Mayor Probonic that I asked the question to. But I do support you. If I didn't, I would have voted no when your contract came up for renewal. And I thank you for all the hard work you've done for this city. Thank you retroactively for your vote. <laughs> thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Um, any other questions for Chief Stone? Seeing none, we will move on to the next item on our agenda. Any old business to come before council this evening? Seeing none, any new business to come before council this evening? Ms. Shaw. Yes, um, after listening to all of those letters from mayors, uh, the constituents, I would like to request the law department to drop new legislation to amend the operating budget back to the original version of two and place it on the agenda for the next council meeting, April 22nd. Okay, Ms. Shaw. Any further discussion about that? This is, this is just putting it on the agenda, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Shaw, you're not, you're not expecting action tonight. We're going to, this is for the next meeting, correct? Just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
I, I don't think that's something we need to vote on because that's not how we no. put things on the agenda. So um, that's fine. Uh, I do have one new business item. I would like to introduce ordinance 2021-75 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance confirming the law director's appointment of Mary Beth Gravio, assistant prosecutor, <clears throat> the city of Stowe establishing compensation for set appointee and declaring an emergency. Uh, uh, thank you, Ms. Villers. I'd move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions, the rule stands suspended. Move to adopt. Second. So moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Villers. Ordinance 2021-75 is passed. It will take effect according to its terms. Any other new business to come before council? Seeing none, we will move on to the disposition of ordinances and resolutions. Um, ordinance 2021-48 is on the table. I would like that to remain on the table this evening as Mr. Wren was returning from vacation and we did not want to overwhelm him with all his emails he already had already. I would like to introduce resolution 2021-59 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. A resolution granting conditional zoning certificate site plan and variance approval to Julie Thomason applicant to construct a car wash facility located immediately west of the Taco Bell restaurant 4152 Kent Road in the city of Stowe, Ohio. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Mr. Altieri, did you vote yes on that? I didn't hear you. Yes, I did. Thank you. The rules stand suspended. I would move to adopt resolution 2021-59. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Resolution 2021-59 is taken is passed and will take effect according to its terms. Mr. McIntyre, I believe the remaining things until the last is yours. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to introduce ordinance number 21-60 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract track with Eight Tech Technologies Incorporated and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of audio-visual upgrades for council chambers in the city hall and the community room in the safety building without the necessity of public bids and declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No. Extensions. Rule stands suspended. Uh, I move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion. Yes. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Bioka? Yes. Feldman. Yes. Ordinance 21 60 has been adopted, will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21 61 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Cleveland Freightliner Incorporated and Henderson Products Incorporated and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of a Freightliner M2106 single axle cab and chassis with snow and ice control truck equipment package for the use by the street department without necessity of bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No abstentions. The rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion. 
Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-61 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-62 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Kent State University and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of annual maintenance services for the new world CAD system were used by city police, cities, police, and fire departments without necessity of bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. I moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Noes, abstentions, the rules stand suspended. I move to adopt. Second. The move and second it to adopt. Further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21 62 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21 63 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Mars Electric Company and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of eight light base plates and 40 LED lights for the replacement along Lewis A. Durker Jr. Boulevard. I move to suspend the rules. Second. We're moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those abstentions, the rules stand suspended. I move to adopt. Second. We're moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21 63 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21 64 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Ashton Sound and Communications Incorporated, a state of Ohio bid list vendor, and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of panic alarm upgrades for the safety center, city hall, and service building without necessity of public bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. I've been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those abstentions, the rules stand suspended. I move to adopt. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion? Seeing none, Seeing none will the clerk please call the roll. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-63 or 21-64 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-65 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Tim Lally Chevrolet Incorporated, State of Ohio awarded vendor, and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of a 2021 Chevy Traverse vehicle for the service department without the necessity of public bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those abstentions, the rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Oh? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-65 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-66 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Utility Truck and Equipment Incorporated, State of Ohio vendor, and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of a 2021 Ford F-550 bucket truck for the service department without necessity of public bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those abstentions, the rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? 
Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-66 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-67 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. Ordinance authorizing and directing the Director of Public Service to advertise and solicit bids on behalf of the City of Stowe for the Lakeview Highland Detention Ponds, Silver Springs Drive Storm Sewer, and Wetmore Street Storm Sewer and Water Line Replacement, authorizing and adopting plans and specifications prepared by the City of Stowe, therefore authorizing the Mayor to make an enter to contracts for said services, so long as proper authorization is first obtained in accordance with Section 173.05, codified ordinances of Stowe, and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. I move to second it. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those abstentions, the rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. I moved and seconded to adopt. All those are uh, further discussion. Seeing none of the clerk, please call the roll. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Bioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-67 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-68 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing and directing the Director of Public Service to advertise and solicit bids on behalf of the City of Stowe for some CR 29-5.72 Graham Road Fitch Creek Intersection Improvement Project, authorizing and adopting plans and specifications prepared by the City of Stowe, therefore, authorizing the Mayor to make an enter to contracts for said services, so long as proper authorization is first obtained in accordance with Section 173.05, Codified ordinance of Stowe and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. I move and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, the rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. I move and seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-68 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. And I'd like to introduce 21-69 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing and directing the Director of Public Service to advertise and solicit bids on behalf of the City of Stowe for the following water projects and declaring an emergency. Wetmore water line and storm sewer replacement, Stowe Road Phase 5 water line replacement, Kent Road Water Line Improvement, Uniondale, Berger, Moreland Water Line Replacement, Water Tower THM Mitigation System, South Sanford Water Line Replacement, and Homewood Brookside Acorn Caleb Water Line Improvement. Authorizing and adopting plans and specifications prepared by the City of Stowe, therefore, authorizing the Mayor to make an enter to contracts for said services, so long as proper authorization is first obtained in accordance with Section 173.05. City of Stowe codified ordinances. I move to suspend the rules. Second. second. I moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No yes. abstentions. Rule we'll stand suspended. I move to adopt. Second. Second. I moved and seconded. Discussion. Oh. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? John? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-69 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. Oh. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-70 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Larkwood Green Enterprises, LEC, LC, LLC, doing business as Larkin Greenwood Ford, a state of Ohio vendor, and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of two 2021 Ford F-150 Super Crew four-wheel drive police responder and two Ford utility four-door vehicles for the police department without necessity of bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. I move to second. And all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those yes. extensions, the rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. I moved and second in discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. 
Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-70 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I now like to introduce Ordinance 21-71 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing and directing the Director of Public Service to advertise and solicit bids on behalf of the City of Stowe for repair and or replacement of siding on the Leona Ferris Lodge, authorizing and adopting plans and specifications prepared by the City of Stowe, therefore, authorizing the Mayor to make an enter to contracts for said services so long as proper authorization is first obtained in accordance with section 173.05, city of Stowe codified ordinances and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No, abstentions, the rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt. Further discussion? Seeing none with clerk, please call the roll. Strong? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-71 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-72 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Stanley Chevrolet for of Aurora LLC State of Ohio vendor and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of a 2021 Chevy Tahoe SUV for the fire department without the necessity of public bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No abstentions. The rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Bioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21-72 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd now like to introduce Ordinance 21-73 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the fund Superior Sales Company Incorporated, a state of Ohio vendor and authorizing expenditures for the purchase of a 2021 Ford E450 ambulance and striker cot loading system for the fire department without necessity of public bids and declaring an emergency. I move to suspend the rules. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All those abstentions, the rule stands suspended. I move to adopt. Second. The moved and seconded discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? John? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 21 73 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I turn it back over to you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2021-74 and ask the clerk to please write it by its title. An ordinance to approve current replacement pages to the so codified ordinances and declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the rules. Second. To move and second is to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions. The rules stand suspended. Um, further discussion. Move to adopt. Second. So moved and seconded to adopt further discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Ordinance 2021-74 has passed and will take effect according to its terms. Ms. Villers, that looks all the, like all the legislation I have. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, disposition of bills. I would make a motion to pay the bills. Okay. Thank you. So moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 The bills stand paid. Pending committee meetings. Ms. Villers, I do not need a planning committee meeting on April 22nd. 
Um, public improvements, Mr. Fioca. Uh, yes, please add one for the 22nd. Thank you, Mr. Fioca. Roads and safety and finance, Mr. McIntyre. Uh, finance. Committee of the whole, Mr. Wren, Ms. Six, is there anything that you see coming for committee of the whole? Not, not that the law department needs, I don't believe, no. I don't think we have anything of this time either. Okay. We will leave it off for now, Ms. Villers. That could change if something comes up. Uh, anything further to come before council this evening? Move to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. Ms. Villers, will you please call the roll? John? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. We stand adjourned. We'll